Morning, everyone. We are here at Disney's Animal Kingdom in sunny Orlando, Florida. The sun is out. It is shining. I figured we'd start it in the parking lot today. Maybe take a tram, although it's leaving. So unless the next one's right behind it, maybe we'll just walk it. But we're going to try and do some fun, different things that we normally don't do here at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Um... Uh, I got a few things in mind, but also we got to do the classics, you know? Of course, we all, I want to ride the safari. We're probably going to go on Everest. We're going to try to do some rides over in Pandora, the land of Avatar. I also brought along the handy dandy Hidden Mickey book. So we can try to find some more hidden fun stuff around here. And we'll show you a bunch of fun facts and uh, other cool little things and, I don't know, doodads. I don't know what that means, but, you know, we're going to do some fun stuff. If you could do me a big favor, please hit that like button. It really does help. Whether you're watching in the future right now, live, it helps uh, push the stream out to others, catch the attention of the algorithm, and it would just mean a lot to me. So if you could hit the like button, you could lightly tap it, hit the thumbs up, smash it, whatever you got to do. Another big compliment, if you haven't already, subscribe. Ooh, I think we're just going to end up walking it. I mean, there's another tram coming, but we're pretty close. Maybe we'll tram it out. What row am I in? Oh. Yeah. Imagine, all right. You can see the floating mountains of Pandora. I hope everyone's having a great week. Sorry we haven't gone live at all this week yet. It's been a super busy week here at Adventures by Carney, and also just in my personal life. But uh, we'll be live today. We're live right now, obviously. And tomorrow, uh, we'll be at Epcot. Um, Piano Rob is at Rose and Crown tomorrow, so we're gonna go see Piano Rob at Rose and Crown and hang out and do a bunch of fun stuff over at Epcot. It's still the International Food and Wine Festival, so maybe we'll keep trying some more food around the world. But today we're at one of my favorite places. The way we decided where we were going today is we took a poll in our Discord. You gotta go check out our Discord. It's completely free. You could use your cell phone, your laptop, pad, computer, anything that connects to Wi-Fi. I'm pretty sure Discord is on. But it's free and it's an amazing community we have there of over 300 members. Uh, there's no sign-up fee. You can make create any name you want. I recommend creating using your real name or your YouTube name so we know who you are. But it's an awesome community, and I asked everyone there last night. I said, where should we go tomorrow morning? I said, uh, we gave Magic Kingdom, Hollywood Studios, Animal Kingdom, Universal, Disney Resorts, or other. And you can make your own suggestion. And Animal Kingdom won out the last minute with one more vote than the Magic Kingdom. So if you want to decide where we go, or if you have an awesome idea for a live stream or an edited stream, hop in our Discord and let me know. I found out another cast member lives in my building. So I always knew I had a Flight of Passage cast member. I really want to become friends with them. I always see them like walking out or coming in just a few steps ahead of me. And I know I have Disney transportation, but this morning I saw someone with a Tower of Terror costume walking their dog. And they were too far away, but I gotta be friends with all these people. Once again, good morning. I hope everyone's having a fantastic week. It's almost the weekend, you made it. You can see that tram versus walking decision. Tram still parked where we were. So we made the right call by coming in. I saw some cool, fun facts. I'm gonna try and find out today if they're true or not. I saw a few on uh, the internet over the last week or two about Animal Kingdom. So we're gonna go test out and see if they're legit. If you're taking a bus to Disney's Animal Kingdom, this is also where you would enter the park. The bus loops to my left. You can see these fine people getting off their buses here from gates one through nine. 
also if you haven't been here in a while the tram uh boarding area is off to the side now by the buses it used to be facing the gates but when they redid security they moved it over here which was a great move it looks like they're off and running we can't record security so as we get closer we'll show you some beautiful animal kingdom pavement You'll see these birdhouses outside of the Animal Kingdom. These are the same birdhouses that are over in Epcot, right between the World Showcase and Future World. Well, now the new neighborhoods. But these are for the Purple Martins that travel back and forth. All right. I'll let you enjoy this beautiful sand-colored Animal Kingdom pavement as we go through. The metal detector in the meantime you can hit the like button you can subscribe check out our discord check out our website adventuresbycarney.fun but uh, i'll be back in 30 seconds Also, I still think we have a few of these left. The Adventures by Carney water bottle is amazing. Keeps your cold beverages cold, your hot beverages hot. This is still ice cold. It's been in my car since seven this morning. You can go to, uh, like I said, the website has them, adventuresbycarney.fun, F-U-N, or on our Discord, they have a whole merch channel. Just pop in there. We could also have a lot of fun stuff. You got the hats. The tank tops. Today we're rocking the 25th anniversary DAC tank. One of my favorites. So one thing we're going to do differently that we normally do is we just go straight in Animal Kingdom. Today we're going to cut through the Rainforest Cafe off to the left. Also another fun fact, you can see this green trail. That's the trunk. It grows up into this tree. So the pavement already welcoming you in. Uh, welcoming you, in. you can also see the Disney 100 logo right there. We are celebrating 100 years of Disney. So there's a fun fact in here, but uh, also want to show everyone Rainforest Cafe. There's also a Rainforest Cafe at Disney Springs. There's two on property. This is a Landry's property, same company that owns T-Rex over at Disney Springs and also Yak and Yeti here at Disney's Animal Kingdom. So first of all, some beautiful areas just to hang out outside the park. A great photo spot here. It's in the shade. It's quiet. No one is ever here. You haven't even entered the theme park. Great picture spot. So if you're here early in the morning and you want a rope drop, I got some hacks for you. This is one, it's a good place to take pictures. But come into Rainforest. You see they have menus outside if you want to look at the menus. A nice little seating area over here, another beautiful waterfall. It's well shaded. Wow, those waterfalls are providing inspiration for sure and this trail connects all the way over here to the ticketing area but we're gonna go inside rainforest cafe actually let me just switch another thing today if the picture ever gets blurry or doesn't look great let me know so i can give you the best possible stream let's head inside the rainforest cafe Beautiful bar area. I love the bar stools here. So you truly are in the rainforest. Look at this. I like the duck one. But look how beautiful this is in here. How's it going? You got the aquarium over there underneath the the trees look at the monkey swinging we're gonna see some real gorillas today you can come in and get breakfast here lunch or dinner another gorilla right here we're gonna go see real animals but how cool is this i love the theming in here i think it's fantastic that's the elephants you got aquariums we got monkeys swinging up above
Got a family of cats over here. Hippos in the trees, rhinos, zebras. Oh, hello. I'm actually going to do, see if this works. I'm going to put this here while I run to the opera real quick. Enjoy some scenery. Hopefully no one steals you. If they do, take a screenshot. All right, we're back. Welcome in to everyone who's just joining us. Happy Thursday. We're here inside the Rainforest Cafe just outside of Disney's Animal Kingdom to show you this restaurant that we normally walk right by. And we haven't shown it in the longest time. I love the bars underneath a giant mushroom. Here's the elephants. And of course you exit through the gift shop. So here's where my hack is. Here's where you come in. This is the entrance to Rainforest Cafe outside of the park. If you walk in and say you want to shop in the gift shop in the morning, and let's say there's a long wait to rope drop. This is an exclusive Adventures by Carney hack. So let's say there's a big, big line to get in and you want to rope drop and kind of run to Avatar or whatever it is. You can, oh, I'm shopping, I'm shopping. Look at all the shopping I'm doing. Oh, it's beautiful. I'm shopping. But what is this? A whole outside area over here? This is crazy. Elephants over here. Fountains, more great picture spots. Get your pictures done before you even start the day. A few family photos. Get misted outside. But this isn't even the hack. The cool Disney hack straight ahead. You might be able to see it. There's your own private turnstile right over here. Sometimes this bar is open. Right now it's not. But look, you get your own turnstile. I don't think I made a pass yet. But I think I have to make one. I don't know if I made a pass. I have to check. I don't know if I did it or not. I thought about making one. But I'll make one quick. I forgot to make a pass. But how cool is that? You got your own turnstile right there. So next time you want a rope drop and run to Avatar, you're welcome. Hit the like button just for that hack. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. I have to make a quick pass to Disney's Animal Kingdom. So no one go anywhere. This is a great time to hit the like button, subscribe, uh, do whatever you gotta do, but we're gonna be back in 60 seconds or less. Don't go anywhere. I will be right back, I promise. the theme park and now we're inside that's why you can see the rainforest cafe menus and sign off to my right and now boom we're in the theme park how cool is that uh oh am i losing everybody oh down to i went from almost 100 to seven people what did i do what have i done Yes, please refresh.
Hopefully my screen is wrong and a lot more of you are here than it shows. Good morning. Let's see if one of the two anteaters are out. There's Annie and there's a second one. I forgot the name of the second anteater. But this is normally where you find the southern giant anteaters. Oh, there. I don't know if that's Annie or the other one, but right back. Normally, it's Annie. She does laps. Yeah, she's going to come back. She's right there. Ready? Look straight ahead. Anteater right there. She gets her steps in. She does laps. You know, giant anteaters have a very slow metabolism and will sleep for up to 15 hours a day. Kind of crazy. What a life. They sleep 15 hours a day. Giraffes eat for 22 hours a day. It's crazy. Let's take the waterfall entrance. So if you come in this way, I'll show you more things. Well, we can go across this bridge, which we're gonna do, but also let's see if Divine is out. There's so much to see in this park. We haven't even seen the tree of life yet. We haven't made it through the entrance because it's so beautiful and there's so much to do. Again, a great picture spot here. Always quiet, good natural light. Just picture you and your family right here in front of this waterfall, you get your Dak pictures in. Dak is Disney's Animal Kingdom, by the way. Oh, look at this rhinoceros iguana. It's a big one. So the rhinoceros iguana uh, is a ground-dwelling reptile and it gets its name from the horn-like scales on its face. Its varied diet includes plants, fruits, and vegetables, insects, and rodents. Just soak it in that sun. Let's see if Divine's out. Here's how you tell, there's usually a crowd. Uh, no crowd, all right. Or she's really good at hiding today. I'm sorry, pardon me. All right, let's go in the cool entrance. Also, so this is a fun way to get the big reveal as well of the Tree of Life. The icon of the park also on these awesome shirts, which were created by the Tomorrowland Traveler. And if you're planning a vacation, I recommend you go to thetomorrowlandtraveler.com. He's an awesome guy, a good friend of mine, a big supporter of the channel, and an amazing travel agent. So go contact Tomorrowland Traveler. He's also in our Discord. He's got his own YouTube channel. Go check him out, he's the best. Tell him I sent you. Look at these beautiful views. All right, we're going across this old rickety bridge. Old rickety. We're gonna go through here and then ready for the big reveal. There it is. Pop out right down the middle. Also, I gotta say hi and good morning to a lot of the chat. I will be catching up with the chat in just a second. Just want to get us into the park. Maybe we'll see some shows today as well. Maybe a little Finding Nemo or Lion King. We'll see what we have time for. We're going to go on as many rides as we can. If you're looking for a Braille map, it's off to my left right outside the Island Mercantile. There's two gift shops when you come in. So if you're looking for Island Mercantile, it's to the left. If you're looking for Discovery Trading Company or the Riverside Depot, it's right here to the right. Beautiful pics of the tree. You can see all the Halloween stuff is out and about. It is full Halloween season. We've started in August here at Walt Disney World. The statues from the 50th are still out. 
Still interactive with those Disney Magic Bands, the newest version. The ones you have to charge though. Ooh, is this a fuel rod station? Yes, it is. Let's swap it out. Also, let's see what press pennies are over here. Mowgli, Baloo. Oh, well, the, oh, that's awesome. There's King Louie, Shere Khan, Ka. I love it. So if you don't know about the fuel rods, they are uh, 30 bucks here at Disney, but it is free unlimited swaps. You place it in, well, I'm gonna hit swap. Place it in the drop. And wait for the magic to happen. Woohoo! We got a fresh battery. And there's fuel rod swaps, I believe, at every resort and park, as well as Disney Springs. Oh, just hovering by this store. I'm getting the AC that's blowing out. It is a hot one here today. Not as crazy as last month. August was record breaking heat. Look at the lamps. Can we just talk about the attention to detail in this park? It is the most beautiful park. Come at me. Just the attention to detail everywhere you look. All right, let's see if uh, what kind of wait times we're working with. There's a board straight ahead, so normally I would use the app, but I'm using my phone to live stream today. Let's see what we got. Everything 10 minutes, Expedition Everest, Cali, Dinosaur, Triceratops spin, all 10 minutes. But let's see over on this side. It's usually a different story. At 90 for Flight of Passage, 25 for Navi, 60 for the Safari. Yikes. Tough to be bugged 10 minutes. We haven't done that, I think, ever on a live stream. Should we do tough to be a bug? It is going away. If you missed the D23 news, it's tough to be a bug is going to be reimagined to a Zootopia show. Also, Dinosaur is going to be turned into Indiana Jones, which works very conveniently because it's the same ride vehicle, same ride system as Indiana Jones out in Disneyland in Anaheim, California. Some people are upset about that, but I think it works. I just think they either had to really give Dinosaur some love or just redo the whole thing. So they're redoing the whole thing. Looking at some lesser flamingos. And if you look in the background, you can see some vultures. They're a pair. There, look at spreading the wings for the camera. Check it out, our vultures. Yeah. Right <laughs> so they're actually, all morning they've been grabbing sticks. They're actually getting ready for nesting season. So you can kind of see. Love it. Oh, see yeah, them. there they yeah. go. <laughs> they look at that. Laugh at face vultures. Love it. And they're together. They're a pair, right? Yes, they are. I was about to say, everybody, I learned that on Disney Plus. If you go watch The Magic of Disney's Animal Kingdom, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, they focus on all the care they give the animals here behind the scenes. You can see some backstage action as well as the seas over at Epcot. It's an amazing show. I'm all about anything Disney parks. I'll check it out. Thank you so much, Hannah. All right, let's get out of here. Let's skedaddle. If you're just joining us, please hit that like button. It really helps. I lost a bunch of people when we froze earlier. I was giving some Disney hacks out and YouTube shut me down. <laughs> but let's get our view count back up. Hit that like button. I promise it helps. So there's over 300 animals carved into the tree of life. I've never taken the time to find all 300, but maybe one day we'll just do an epic stream. It might take 12 hours, but you can see some over here. There's an elephant right there. It looks like a we got a buck right here. Lots of fun stuff. An iguana. Let's see if there's any lemurs out today. Lemurs. I can't believe we're about to do the, the one attraction in this park I tell everybody to skip. But today we're doing, we're trying to do different things today. We're mixing it up from our traditional streams here at Disney's Animal Kingdom. So over here, you can find the collared brown lemur and the ring-tailed lemur. Oh, there's a ring-tailed lemur right there. I love watching the lemurs over here. Show us your good side. There you go. Another lemur sitting right over there.
if you want another good view of the lemurs, you can head on up this walkway. So this is the, I call this the south trail of the Tree of Life. There's two trails that go along the Tree of Life. But yeah, you can come right over here and get a close up of the lemurs. Oh, Steve said, is Pete talking about streaming Bugs Life? They don't allow video in there at all. Like, don't allow it where, like, I'll get in trouble or they just recommend against it. I mean, let's walk the line and see what happens. I don't want to break rules. But I do want to do things that we normally don't do. And since a Bugs Life is going to be Zootopia in a few years. By the way, all that news is over the next few years. Nothing's happening right away. So you don't have to rush to do Dinosaur or Bugs Life in the next year or so. This is uh, Blue Sky. This line does provide beautiful views of the Tree of Life, though, and so much gorgeous foliage, green, plant life, and you see some lemurs. Let's see what else we can find. Let's see how hardcore they are about video. Like I said, if it's, if it's a rule, we won't do it. Worst case, we'll just uh, do some of the trails around the Tree of Life. Um, this can be emphasized more with that giant exclamation. This attraction may be frightening for children. My nieces and nephews that I brought on this have lost their mind. They were not a fan. So you should know that. Make sure <laughs> your kids are tough because uh, it's something to be bugs. It's a theatrical journey into a bug's world that features images of insects, loud noises, dense fog, and things that creep and crawl in the dark. Yeah. What's kind of crazy about this, uh, I read, was they started developing this before the movie came out. Is that when they were building Animal Kingdom, they wanted some IP in here, uh, and they were looking for something to put into this theater that was gonna be underneath their beautiful park icon, the Tree of Life. So they started developing this show even before A Bug's Life came into theaters. Kinda cool, nice job. Taking a big risk, hoping it was uh, gonna do well, but it crushed at the box office very well. All right, here we go. I love this line, just so many animals, to Spot and look, we got an anteater right there. Looks like a what is that? Walla or something over there? Lots of fun stuff. How's it going? Good, thank you. All right, cast member number one. Super nice. While we wait, I'll catch up with some chat too. But I just wanted to show you this line again. We don't ever do this on streams. If you're new to the channel, then this is all new to you. But if you've been around for a minute, we haven't done this in forever. Or got inside the Rainforest Cafe like we started the stream. If you missed the beginning, go back and watch after we're done. I gave away some fun facts. You got a bird over here. This is like a armadillo or a lizard of some sort. We got some mukakus up there. Look, a little beetle right there. I love it. Some of the best parts of this line, too, are all the posters. They're fantastic. If we had more time, I would show them to you. But I think we're loading right in. Or... We are loading right in, it looks like. Right, so Steve might have been right. I don't know if they don't allow filming or not, but it doesn't work at all. There is no Wi-Fi and no cell service inside of that theater at all. So we pop back out. At least we can walk the line together. So, I'll show you some of those posters I was talking about. Claire de Room, a scintillating stink bug. Now appearing in It's Tough To Be A Bug. Termitator, the explosive, sol the explosive soldier termite. He's armed and ready for action. 
weevil, nevil, love it, the aerobatic acorn weevil. You'll go nuts over this act. Chili, the deadly Chilean tarantula. When he comes to <laughs> when he comes to throwing quills, he's a hit. And then we have the Dung Brothers, a dynamic doo duo. This well-balanced pair of performers were born for these roles. <laughs> All right. Oh wow, look. More beautiful animals carved in. You got a huge walrus up there. Well, I know. And we are right underneath the tree of life. All right, well, we tried Tough to be Bug. But at least we got to show you the line, and the line is beautiful. I wonder if. Oh, uh, we already left. I think there's a hidden Mickey in here. We're headed back out. Jump to this side because it looks like no one's on this side. We'll head back out. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you're having a great week. I'm Pete Carney. We're here hanging out at Disney's Animal Kingdom at Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida. With some amazing and majestic creatures today. We're going to have a wild time. If you could do me a big favor, please hit that like button. It sincerely helps. And if you're new, consider subscribing. We would love to have you. We're here at the Disney parks all the time, as well as the other theme parks here in Orlando, SeaWorld, uh, Universal Studios. And we travel all over doing lots of fun things. We're still updating our trip from Dragon Con, our trip from our road trip over the summer. Lots of content coming your way. I was at SeaWorld this weekend with my nieces and nephews. I recorded some videos, so that's coming out. So tons of content. All kinds of fun stuff. You're just into fun, adventure, travel, good times, some positivity. This is the spot for you. We're also doing a meetup. I was talking about how you could find, actually I'm about to take a sip of water, merch in our uh, Discord and website. Our website, adventuresbycarney.fun, also has all of our meetup information. So if you're here or if you're in town, whether you're a local or on vacation, October 1st through the 4th, we got a bunch of us hanging out. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. You don't even need to sign up or anything. God bless you. All you got to do is just show up. Some of the schedules already posted on the website, adventuresbycarney.fun. Check it out. Another thing we normally never do. Well, first, we got to go say hi to Kevin. Kevin's out and about. Still a few water bottles left. We got some hats and t-shirts. If you don't see something, let me know. You can go to the website or our Discord. Go to Merch Talk. Look at this timing. There goes Kevin. Hey, this is how you wake up in the morning. people dance. We're here all the time. If you're looking for the Viva Gaia show, it's right by the entrance by the Discovery Trading Company. 
and the entrance to Dino Land right across from Flame Tree Barbecue. The smell of barbecue is in the air as we party it up with Viva Gaia. Also, the Moana meet and greet, which is moving to Epcot, is over here for now. You can meet Moana right by the entrance of Dino Land USA down that pathway. Here at Flame Tree Barbecue, how's it going? You got your ribs, your chicken, your pulled pork, your baked mac and cheese, your chicken salads. They got St. Louis ribs, smokehouse sandwiches, a little bit of everything. But what I like about Flame Tree Barbecue, you can also mobile order, is the seating area. And whether you're eating at Flame Tree Barbecue or not, you can come back and explore this beautiful seating area. Most of it nicely shaded. So they even say seating and condiments, follow the signs. All have fans, so you have this beautiful area up here, and then we'll go down towards the water. So all in the shade, much needed seating up here. How's it going? Un including underneath this green roof as well. But I like if you head down towards the water. You could have some nice peace and quiet if you want, or rock it out to Viva Gaia, depending on where you sit. But I just love the atmosphere of the park. The last time we were down here, a long time ago, we saw a bunch of little baby ducklings, little chicks. Look at this gorilla. So as we move further away from Viva Gaia, we head down towards the water and look at these views where you could sit and eat your lunch or just take a moment and relax. Oh, someone just went by. Look at that framed picture right there absolutely gorgeous and they have more shade down here and also i'm not sure if you could see it but they have these wires drawn so the birds don't fly in you also have this beautiful reflection pool area but let's just show you underneath here so if you were to come down here they all know the hack this is where you want to be Just the attention to detail. You know how many people never even come down here and those beautiful hand-painted ceilings and the carvings into the uh, side of the side post, into the side of the side post, what am I saying? The support beams, it's just amazing. The attention to detail in this park is unbeat. I can't speak today, it's too early. Like, are you kidding me? Oh, I just had a little critter on my arm there. No one even comes down here. I mean, uh, yes, people do come down here, but look at all this theming and seating in the shade. Also, forks, knives, spoons, and napkins available underneath every roof. So you don't have to walk all the way back up top. But again, another seating area over here is just so beautiful. You can watch the flotillas go by. So gorgeous. While we're here for a second, actually, let me just back it up into the shade just to protect myself a little bit. And so I can read the screen. We'll say hi to some chat. We'll catch up with some chat. Say hi to some people why. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here with us here at Disney's Animal Kingdom. I hope you are having a fantastic week. It's a wonderful Thursday. You've made it to Thursday. Let's say hi, catch up with some chat, and see what I missed. Thanks for sticking around too. I know we had a little bit of camera shoot out of the gate. We were doing some fun facts over at Rainforest Cafe. But anyway, let's go back to the very beginning. Lynette coming in at 8.23 in the morning. Tomorrowland Traveler, my man, Andrew C., Stephen Noon, John Thorne, Melvin Lee, 
We missed you, Mel, but uh, it looked like you had a great time. I'm glad you got to see Yeehaw Bob. Jamie Philippone in the house. Walter K, what's up? Good morning. Peaches P is here. Thanks, Peaches. Tell everybody, hit that like button. Just mousing around, Long Island represent in the chat. Have a great day. Yes, I was just kidding. I'm still a Jets fan, even though it was a rough start. I mean, we won, but losing Aaron Rodgers was rough. But I was just kidding. I put it short out in case you missed it, teasing that I was going to become a Dolphins fan after the news. But I'm a Jets fan for life. I love the pain. Yes, please hit that like button. Thank you so much for everybody in the chat. Telling, you know, encouraging everyone to hit the like button. It really does help. Andrew says, I'm ready for a Pete Margarita in a few weeks. That's right. I have my own secret menu item here. If you didn't know, if you go to the restaurant, the Saurus Lounge, and Jimmy's working, ask for a Pete Margarita. It's a real thing. Uh, it's pretty strong, so you got to like a strong margarita. But it's amazing, and Jimmy's the man. Mark Mueller, good morning. Great to see you. Mr. Dave says, love Natazu. Thanks for the stream, Pete. Absolutely. Animal Kingdom is Natazu. If you ever saw the original commercials, uh, they were trying to tell people that this is a conservation park, not just another zoo. They had to get a lot of approvals from a lot of different agencies because they were they got hit with a lot of heat when they wanted to open up a park with animals. Um, so they want to make sure that they did the right thing. So they had Jane Goodall here as a ambassador and other um, representatives from other organizations that care about animals to say, look, we're going to give the animals the room they need, the enclosures that give them room to, you know, just like, you know, to make them happy that they need. And eventually the protesters were like, okay, it's cool, we get it. But, um, and they went away and they were like, all right, Disney's doing the right thing. Because Disney's got to do the right thing, right? I mean, there's a full animal hospital here on property. Disney does animal operations and rescues all the time. You can go see it, uh, again, on that Disney Plus show. But also, if you want to see it in person, Rafiki's Planet Watch has, uh, you can see into the back of the animal hospital. Andrea Schumacher, what's going on? Good morning. Angie, good morning. Dawn is here. Andy Van Dyke, what's up, my man? Andy, Stephen Noon is in the house. Eliza, good morning. Great to see you. I know Lynette and Dawn were pushing hard for Animal Kingdom. Animal Kingdom 1, uh, we did a poll in our Discord of which park should we go to today. Uh, last night I put the poll up, waited until uh, the last minute this morning, until around what time? I don't know. I think we pulled the trigger around 8, 7.38, and Animal Kingdom won one vote over the Magic Kingdom. I was telling a story about how I saw a cast member that I live with. It was a Tower of Terror cast member walking their dog. Don said, uh, I can just imagine a bellhop walking their dog. That's awesome. I agree, Daniel. I love the entrance. It's, I love this whole park. But, yeah, the entrance is amazing. Mike T says, RSVP at Dawa for 11. It's 11 in three minutes. We'll head that way. But I don't know if you're here, Mike, but I would love to see you. Dawn says, we used to do the rainforest cut through. Yeah, a little hack there. Steve Marmelstein, good morning. Jason Meckis, good morning. Steve, thanks for the heads up before trying to help. Steve said, a lot of the streamers are going to Animal Kingdom today. Is there a super, a super secret conspiracy? I, don't, I didn't know about it. I did it because of the Discord. I let everyone else vote. Bill in the house, Dave. you see Bill talking about the merch. Bill is our merch man oh there goes pluto and goofy just floated on by allison b what's up says i'm secretly watching at work well next time we'll have someone else make a pass for me so thanks don oh there goes goofy and pluto floating by right there there they go Jamie Philippone says, I love Disney's Animal Kingdom. I really want to try getting tickets for Up Close with Rhinos so for my next trick. I just, one of the tours I haven't done yet. I've done the um, Caring for Giants, the Elephant Tour. I've done uh, the DAC Trek. But I haven't done the Rhino one yet. On the bucket list. Andrew Saunders, good morning. Oh, another flotilla is coming by. Let's see who it is. 
head out of the shade. What do we got? Oh, Miko and Pocahontas. There she is, Bill, just for you. Let's see if we can get to say hi. Get some love from my homegirl. There she is. Oh, looking wonderful. Hey, guys. Have a great day. Look. Oh, geez. I think that was for you, Bill. You can still see Mickey. Not Mickey. I'm sorry. <laughs> what am I saying today? Pluto and Goofy across the lagoon here. The former lagoon of many shows that just couldn't make it. They should have put those Epcot barges over here. Look at her just doing laps over there. The big wave. I love it. It's so beautiful. There she goes. You see where I'm hanging out right there? All right, where was I? We're almost caught up with the chat. And I gotta, I'm gonna head over towards Dawa, see if we can say hi. I love meeting you guys. If you ever see me in the park, come up and say hi. Just please introduce yourself. Uh, as I meet a lot of people. But yeah, come up and say hi. I love meeting people. Let's take a picture. I'll repost it, I'll tag it. So yeah, more of this seating area. I'm gonna catch up with more chat second as I walk, but just an unbelievable place to hang out. So do yourself a favor, go find Flame Tree Barbecue. Come on back here and take some time for yourself. A nice quiet spot and just appreciate like all, everything that went into this area. Look at that, come on. Oh, who's coming by now? Up. Oh. Is that Scrooge? It is. We're over here hiding. Ah, oh, you just missed us. Hi. Launch pad going on by as well. This is why this is a great spot. All right, let me go back up to this chat, read some chat while I walk. Also, I think Mike's over at Dawa. I don't know if I ever met Mike T. I don't know if, if I have. Sorry, Mike. But I'm excited to meet to see you. I'll know when I see you. Oh, thanks, Daniel. I totally will. Well, unless someone wants to make it for me. Got to reserve Epcot for October 1st for the meetup. I don't have it in my reservations. Anyone who's linked to me and wants to reserve it for me, feel free. Also, your link to Lauren. Hey, follow Bradley's fun. Good morning. Great to see you. Mr. Fulton Mraz says, I have some good news. Today, we won both softball games and we are the state champions. That's amazing. Congratulations, Mr. Fulton Mraz. They won the championship for the Hamilton County Special Olympic softball team called the, Ro the Rockin' Rookies. I love it. Congratulations. Have yep. yes. All right, we're going to head into Asia. I'm pretty sure they're going to leave the 50 statues up for a while. Oh, that's fun. Dawn has the tree life as her Zoom background. Yeah, a lot of talk about whether people, a lot of people upset about Dinosaur leaving, some people excited about Indy. I think Dinosaur needed some love anyway, so listen, I'm just excited for new things. More everything, right? Beggars can't be choosers, and I just want more things. Another great picture spot here if you have a Disney photo pass. If the stream ever gets blurry, try refreshing, but then let me know so I can fix it on my end. I just want you to have the best possible stream. This park is too beautiful for you not to have a nice crisp stream. 
<laughs> Brandy, good morning. So it looks like I came in and crashed the stream earlier. Moogle, good morning. Moogle, I, sorry I didn't get to see you at SeaWorld this weekend. I literally looked at my phone at the end of the day and it said Moogle would like to share their location. And I was leaving the park. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Ooh, Tomorrowland Traveler said, I created a new snack today, bacon granola. It's delish. It sounds it. <laughs> Brandy said, so bacon bits? Tomorrowland Traveler, by the way, not only an amazing guy, you can see him here in the chat, and a friendly face, has his own channel, go check it out, and an amazing travel agent. Go to the tomorrowlandtraveler.com. Have a great day, Angie. Thanks for checking in. Thanks for anyone who just pops in, whether it's for a few minutes or a few hours, or comes back and watches the pieces they missed. It always means a lot. Another view of the Tree of Life. Now we're on the north side. That's where the exit for a Bugs Life Theater is, right? Also, beautiful picture spots along there. You can see some tortoises, some kangaroos over there as well. We'll try and get over there in a little bit. Look at that. Dawn said the best seats of Dak are down by Flame Tree. Look at that. I'm Great minds. It's also, yeah, a fantastic area for when it rains. It's a great point by Lynette. Suzanne, good morning. Great to see you. Oh, thanks, Peaches. Peaches says Pete's got a po uh, such positive and fun energy. It makes me smile. That's what it's all about. Life's too short. That's why we do these streams. Hopefully bring a little happiness, joy, positivity into your life. You deserve it. I'm rooting for you. Oh, Bill missed Pocahontas because he's at the doctor. Well, we'll have to show him on the replay. Mike Terveen in the house. Miss you, buddy. So the area um, with the market, the Harambe market, still closed off as they make some refurbishments. But you can walk around to the easy side. The drums and the pin stations over here. You can also cut through this seating area. An area not a lot of people know about. A little L-shaped seating area here. You get some shade. Right across from Dawa. Which we'll go say hi, see who's working over there. Pops out right by the stage. Some of my favorite performances right here on this stage in Africa. We have made the move, by the way. We are now in Africa. If you can't tell, Asia was great, but here we are. Today we got Steve and Bob from Boston. Two great bartenders. Mike T, I don't know if you're over here, but I'm here. While we're over here, let's go check out. We'll just do the little walk. I can look it up my phone. Again, if you're here on vacation, you want to make sure you download the My Disney Experience app. It will help you out. It may not always work beautifully, but it is a great resource. But since I'm using my phone, I know the show times for today are posted right here for Lion King. And let's just make a mental note. So 10, 11, 12, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. So that show just started. I love the theming. Tusker House, another great spot. I highly recommend it. If you can get an early Tusker House breakfast reservation. One, I love their breakfast. But two, you get into the park early. Get that breakfast in, get a nice hearty meal, take pictures with, uh, you know, Mickey, Donald, Minnie, Pluto, all in their safari gear, and then come out and you're exit right into Africa. Here's some more press penny machines. Look at that lion, Timon and Pumbaa, nice rhino right there.
We are blessing the rains <laughs> right here in Africa. <laughs> That's so great. Well played, Izzo. Well played. Izzo's got another, another amazing YouTube channel. Go check out Izzo. Izzo's place. Especially if you're into bourbon. My man is has a wealth of knowledge on bourbon. But also carpentry and so many other things. He's just a great guy. What do we got? A 45-minute wait? That's about 25 minutes too long for me. Looks like uh, the train from Rafiki's Planet Watch is emptying. Should we go over there? Why not? Let's do it. Maybe the train's still in the station. We're doing different things than we normally do here today. Open your eyes to the world around you. If you've never done Rafiki's Planet Watch, it's super cute. I recommend it more for families, but anyone can come do it. I like it myself. Get myself some goat therapy when I'm over here. But they have a petting zoo. You could learn to draw some of your favorite Disney characters uh, with an, uh, learning a little bit of animation. How they make it happen. And you get to draw something too. Also, like I said, the back of that animal hospital. Oh, they locking the train up. Well, maybe we'll find some hidden Mickeys in the meantime. Yeah, it looks like they're locking the train up. So let's talk over here for a sec. Hey, everybody. Hi, I'm Pete, if we never met. Pete Carney, so nice to meet you. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you're having a great week so far. It is an amazing Thursday. We're here at Disney's Animal Kingdom. The train is pulling out right behind me. You can see it right there. It's a hot one. Give the face a little wipe. I am rocking the ABC gear today. We still got more of these tanks and t-shirts on the back. It's my favorite shirt. I wear this all the time. It's also why I'll choose Animal Kingdom because it's an excuse to wear this shirt. <sighs> nice and cold. Still a few left. All right, we're getting situated. is a hot one. Like I said, if you're gonna be in town or if you're a local, October 1st through the 4th, it's completely free. Just come meet up, hang out with us. You can see the whole schedule over on adventuresbycarney.fun. This is where you pick up all this gear that I just showed you. David D loves Disney, good morning. Lynette says, please hit the like button when you come in, thanks. I agree, if you guys can help us out, the like button really just helps with the algorithm. And we need to spread some more of this Disney magic, especially Animal Kingdom. It's one of the most beautiful places on the planet. As close as you get to the real thing. Wow, look at this crazy hair. What's happening here? Woo, I, get, I, look like an, I look like a wild animal. We are only 22 likes away from 100. So, uh, yeah, that would be a big help. Hi, Andrea. Great to see you. We'll go pet some goats. We'll go see tubs. Lady Kirk. What's going on? Says, I love the goats, too. I love it. Izzo's place. Uh, we were just talking about it. Woodworking, whiskey, and whimsy. That's fun. Unless there's a bird show happening soon. Anyone want to look that up for me? I have the phone here. I do. Oh, you know what I should do? All right. I know this was a disaster last time, but I'm going to check something on my phone. Normally it doesn't freeze, but don't go anywhere, please. It's just getting good. We're just getting into the heart of it. Just leave it on for one sec. I'm going to be back so fast, you won't even know what happened. Please don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. We're back. All right, David D. says, Limb 15, Animal Encounters. Oh, so we'll do the bird show. Well, should we do Rafiki's Planet Watch or should we go to the bird show? The train just pulled in. What should we do? Quick, hit me up in the chat. Let me know. Do you want to run to the bird show, which starts well, in one minute? Let me go in a little late. Let's just do Rafiki's. We're here. Let's go on a little train ride. Let's go see some goats. Why not? Oh, 1130 is the next Feathered Friends? Ooh, all right, so we do have a decision, because now we have 15 minutes. Do we go do the bird show in Asia, or do we do Rafiki? Let me know. Oh, 
Oh, Wind Encounters. Yeah, that's the show in front of the tree. Sorry, I read it real fast, and when I saw Winged, I was like, oh, the bird show. So David D says, Planet Watch has beds. I mean, we've had decent signal there in the past, I think. But I like the bird show, too. We could always do it. You know what? Let's just go do the bird show, because we could do Planet Watch all day long. And the bird show only has select times, and we should get there just in time. It starts in 14 minutes. Who doesn't love a good show? We haven't done that show in a while. We are mixing it up today, doing different things in our normal stream. Pardon me. If you're enjoying the stream, please hit the like button. It really does help. So you can still get to the Harambe Market. I was going to show everyone this earlier. Just on the other side of that wall. They just close off that little section of sidewalk. I love me some Harambe Market. But since we're headed to the show... Oh, now everybody wants to do Rafiki. All right, we'll come back and do Rafiki before we leave, I promise. We will Rafiki before we leave. You have my word. And if we don't, I'll do a second stream today. But I'm fairly confident we're going to go back and do it later on. Well, let's go see some birds. I like shows. Oh, drummers are out, banging around. Time for drums. We're headed to a show. You guys fun lighting. I love this park. Ah, uh, the whole atmosphere of this place is just so amazing. We're just drummers drumming here in Africa. Everywhere you look, just gorgeous, lush greenery and theming. They do have these boards with all the times as well. This used to be the old uh, smoking trail. We could just take it for fun, show you what was up here. So now if you want to smoke, you have to be out of the park. You have to exit the park. We're up for the smokers out there, but I had, you know, I feel like we kind of saw it coming. But it's a beautiful place to get some peace and quiet, some shade away from the hustle and bustle of the main path. I know uh, when I had to rock my niece or nephew to sleep in the stroller, this is where I took him up here because you're kind of away from all other guests. It's in the shade. You have the sound of the running water. Great spot to catch a nap. And you do have the seating area here as well where you can grab some shade. And again, have a little moment of quiet reflection. And we pop out right here by Mr. Kamal's on the Caravan Road. We're here at Caravan Road. You can get your shaved ice. Mr. Kamal's slinging those dumplings and those seasoned fries. They are delicious. Also a restroom here. This one's a bit of, bit of a busier restroom. You'll also notice there's doors on the restrooms here at Animal Kingdom. The only park with doors on the restrooms is because they're also used as areas of refuge. If God forbid anything should happen or an animal gets loose which has not happened in 25 years here you can uh go into the restrooms and close the door as a little place to be safe only park that's got those doors all right we're here at the theater for our feathered friends in flight we got about 10 minutes so we'll go in with five minutes left so there's not too much i don't i don't i don't want y'all to get bored show time is today i'm glad we're catching this one 11 30 1 30 2 30 3 30 so first show of the day it looks like, unless they took the other magnet off, but who knows. There used to be a show here, my man, having some men, uh, having some health issues. <laughs> I'm having mental health issues today, but he's having some health issues, so prayers. There's a video we took. I think they fixed the problem, but there was heavy, heavy rain here, like, I don't know, it had to be two years ago. 
We were sitting here and all the water rushed into here and there was literally water up to the red on those posts. It was wild. This was like <laughs> a rapids. There was a river flowing. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen. But I think they fixed that since then. Come on, tell me this isn't the most beautiful park ever. Stop the madness. Look at the theming. Look at the theming. Pat makes 75 in the house. What's going on? Yeah, no, still no sitar player by Mr. Kamal's brand, he said. That's fun. I've never done, I've never rope drop Rafiki, but David says, Rafiki, first thing in the morning, you can catch the veterinarians doing checks on the animals. I have been there throughout the day and seen them doing work on animals, but uh, that's fun. I don't know if, if it's every day, but that's a fun little trick by David. I'll have to check it out one day. All right, let's get a seat. We've done our duty. Hi. All right. How's it going? All right, sweet. Not a lot of people in house today. We'll, uh, I like to sit, let's see. There's uh, also the bleachers on each side. Where's a good spot where I can catch all the action for all of you without impeding everybody else's view? I'm gonna say right here on the end. This is the spot. This is where it's at. If you've never seen this show, it's very cute. Some, uh, we also brought this book along today. I'll show you some fun hidden Mickeys. Oh, we're doing a little reading now. So if we go see Festival of the Lion King later on uh, 
Timon's float. There is a white classic Mickey that's painted on the lower middle of Timon and the giraffe's float. That's fun. Also, there's an upside down white classic Mickey on the lower right side of the float underneath the giraffe's front leg. We'll have to keep an eye out. Three circles former classic Mickey on the front left side of Pumbaa's float. And also a classic Mickey is on the lower side of the movable center stage to the right of some steps. All right. It's usually facing the elephant section of the audience. Good to know. Here we go. We got four hidden Mickeys inside Festival of the Lion King. doing some reading. Hi, I'm Pete. Thanks for being here. I just dropped my bookmark. Some stickers. Today we're hanging out. We're doing some things we normally don't do on the stream. Uh, we're going to be seeing some shows, going to some areas and places in the park we normally don't do. Taking some trails we normally don't walk. Just trying to mix it up. We tried doing a Bugs Life, but there's no cell phone or Wi-Fi service in there. So don't attempt it. You can go in and pre-record. Maybe we'll do that before it leaves. We're also doing some hidden Mickeys here at the park. We showed you some uh, fun hacks over at Rainforest Cafe. And yeah, I'll give you any other fun facts I have along the way. You can see how hot it is. Look up. The Tree of Life has an aura around it. It's hot. This park also uh, tends to hold the heat in a little bit more. It's still a great park, but... Yeah, it's a bit warm. You wanna make sure you're hydrating when you get here at Disney, but not nearly as bad as last month. All right, let's see some other uh, Hidden Mickey areas. Where will we be later on? So if we go see the Finding Nemo show, there's two Hidden Mickeys in this book. Let's see, one of them says, three bubbles touch to form a classic Mickey at the lower left-hand side of the stage. Okay, good to know. Uh, over hint, let's see. Also over by Finding Nemo, two sideways classic Mickeys formed by bubbles hide in each of the two outdoor signs announcing the showtimes for the day. One is the bottom right corner of the sign, the other is under the word the, near the bottom of the sign. These signs are both posted on the walkway from Asia to Dino Land. So if we're heading from Everest towards the theater, good to know. We're gonna try and get on Everest today too. Uh, we also have a fast pass for the safari. So we have to do the safari. It's a must do, for me at least, every time I come to the park. Because you never know how the animals are going to act, behave, what they're doing, what animals are out and about. Um, we saw the other day, I wish I was live, we saw one of the new babies. Um, you know, I've seen giraffes necking, like fighting with their necks. Um, we've seen some crazy things. We've seen animals reproducing. That's right, two white rhinos producing more white rhinos. So yeah, you never know what you're gonna see on the safari and it's awesome. Uh, we've seen lions roaring. And there's so many beautiful animals. Where else can you see African painted dogs, okapis, flamingos, cheetahs, ostriches, black and white rhinos, heal the world, crocodiles. Let's see what else, if I can name them all. Bongos, sable antelope, Watusi cattle, wildebeest. I said bongos. What's over there too? Greater kudu. There we go around. I'm not gonna be able to remember the birds. What else have we seen on this safari? Oh, we got we got bird action. Well, the birds are starting soon. I just thought I'd talk to you guys for a little bit. You can see my jolly red face. Oh, here we go. We're starting. He just changed the radio. So that bird came out, turned on the radio, found a water bottle, picked it up, and threw it in the trash.
going to Care Club, Alpha Natural Program, every day since this is our open back in 1998. Yeah, yes. this is our favorite part of every day. We get to come out here and show off some of the amazing birds that we work with, and we love to showcase their natural adaptations that make them great at what they do out in the wild. That's true. We have birds from all over the world, well adapted to whatever it is they need to do. The bird we're going to be meeting next is a beautiful black and white bird. There she oh. is. Uh, that can be found out in Africa. Oh. This is Daisy. She's a trumpeter part, Bill. They are well adapted for flight. They can dart and dive in and around the trees. And we have a cool way to show that off. Are you going to have another yeah. dive? Yeah, perfect. So, what we need is two people from the same party. If you want to stand up, become tall trees today. You get a very close view of Daisy, hopefully flying to your arms. That's, that's the concept that we love. Now, we're looking for right now. So, okay, here's my, here's my. This is going to work out well. Right up front, you both have white shirts. Right behind them, red shirt and like a whitish tank top. Then in the back, floral dress and the gray shirt. All six of you stand up, face your body, and put your arms up like this. They're nice. making they're making hoops. Good morning, Melon. Hi, Shelly. Yeah, that's it. But we need help. Uh, so oh, these help birds who? The <laughs> uh, Patrick, what's going on? Good morning. Captain Kirk, good morning. We missed you, Melon. Melon, come hang out with us October 1st or the 4th. Full schedule for October uh, is on the website, adventuresbycarney.fun. Because it's not the amount of money that matters. Also the Discord. It's just like that dollar, what it represents. It's like a little platform, right? You'll know exactly where to land. Are you comfortable with it landing on you? Okay, that's the idea here. Okay, so, picture this. We can bring this anywhere else in the park. Bring it onto your side for there. It's perfect. And yeah, you get a really close look at the bird. And we take your money, too. <laughs> Whenever it lands on your 
Same hand. Just wrap your fingertips around it so it doesn't blow away whatever is flying around. All right, here we go. Perfect. Right on out to you. And wrap those fingertips. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you so much for your help. <laughs> okay, do you want to see now? Fly? Yeah, okay, so he's going to be all over the scene. So if you haven't been close to the bird yet, now is going to be the time. If the inches over your head, flying around, if you have your cameras, get them out. Uh oh. Oh boy. Everyone watching slow motion. This house should come right at us over our heads. You gotta love the words ambush, predator, and cute in the same sentence. Well, the funny part is, Gary knows how to touch shoes, right? The cool part 
It's only your shift. It's only my shift. Right? There's nothing about it. Eight over here. Got her mic cord. <laughs> They're back on our side. Yeah. Can you get the board? It's gone. The bird and the board. That's it. What do you do? Jeff, yeah, Jeff, yeah, Jeff, for a sound tech. Go backstage. Well, Jeff, she doesn't have to go backstage. We can get like Scott to go backstage, and then we can just keep going because it's a two-person show. So it's a little awkward after. Well, uh, the shoelace thing's pretty cool, right? <laughs> yeah. Release the chickens. I like that idea. Yep. What? Hey, teacher, you're here. What? What's going on? I do need some help. What's up? Oh, that's a good idea. Do you, you don't want to be the talking character? Yeah. I think they do. Gotcha. Okay, let's do it. All right, awesome. All right, so TJ is going to give us a hand here. Uh, so, talking here. The idea behind that is mimicry. Have you all heard of mimicry before? Okay, well, that's, that's the idea behind it. And uh, off the wild, you know, the, the talking characters for the Amazon characters. Groucho is an Amazon character we need today. Uh, it's their flock base that they're, you know, mimicking out there in the wild. And it might be something else that's in their environment, but that's the key, it's in their environment. Um, there's one really, really important point with Groucho, because he grew up around people. So the mimicking that you hear kind of sounds like human speech. And uh, I forgot my microphone, I'll be right back here. <laughs> yeah, that's important for what we're about to do, because, yeah, Groucho, thank you so much for your help. Uh, yeah, all right. You don't want to hear what I got to say. Let's hear what Groucho's got to say. You want to say hello? Oh. Yeah. Ooh. There it is. Okay. A little bit of that mimicry, right? And with Groucho, that's just the beginning. Groucho, believe it or not, an accomplished singer. So maybe if we're lucky, we'll hear a couple songs today. What do you think? You want to sing? So good. Yes, yeah, so cool. And I have no idea how that bird does it without lips and a tongue. Guys, yeah, that's creepy, but it's pretty cool to see that mimicry in action. Um, and that's not the only song, right? Like, like I said, there's a bunch of them up there. Uh, so what do you think? You want to sing? Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Let's give me a kiss first. Thanks for being so patient. So let's try that song. What do you think? Oh, right. Awesome. Yeah, TJ! Coming out here, you give me a meal for that. So awesome. Hey, you're back. I'm back. You can hear me, right? Microphone. Yeah. Yes, excellent. That was a great idea. Yeah, so cool to learn a little bit about that mimicry. Uh, one thing's really important to both of us, though, is as awesome as Groucho is, Groucho is like one in a million. So, yeah, you really want to think about it before you bring a, a parent like that into your home. They're really, really tough pets. Yeah, most don't talk and sing and do all the amazing things for us to how to do, right? There's also a lot of challenges like fighting really hard, screaming incredibly loud, and they live a long time. Easily 40 to 50 years, the larger the cause, they live up to 80 years. Yeah, definitely a lifelong commitment. And if that's not enough, think about like hearing all those songs at five.
5 a.m. in your kitchen every morning? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Moving on. Moving on. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the top gun. The top gun here is a marabou store. And these amazing birds can be found out in Africa. She has a 7 foot wingspan. Uh, the males can have upwards of 11 foot wingspans. Wow. Yeah, they're incredible <laughs> to see in flight. And over in Africa, you know, they serve a really important role out there in the wild. Because they're carriers, yeah, they're just scavengers. It's kind of gross that they like to eat dead stuff, but it cleans up the mess out there. It stops the spread of disease too. We like to call these birds like nature's recyclers. Exactly, because if we take care of them, we're together, this world would be a much cleaner place. Now check out what I said at top speed. <laughs> <laughs> what an <laughs> elegant <laughs> exit. Fraser Crane. Fraser Crane. <laughs> See you later, Shelly. Have a great day. We did it. We did it. It didn't work. Yeah. That's all right. Uh, okay, well, uh, you want to try and calm down? Do you want to sound a bit? Right now. It the train does have skills. Yeah, Lady the Kirk and Captain Kirk are here. Yeah. Lady Kirk asks, is there a book where you get all the fun facts? Um, um, I have a hidden Mickey book, but really just facts I picked up along the way. I've read a lot of Disney books, and of course the internet is undefeated. And going on a lot of tours and stuff. But anyway. We'll talk more after the show. So what that looks like whenever we see a behavior that we want to see, we get something in return. So, Sweet, uh, sassy molassy. Uh, I thought for sure it was coming right into the camera. Behaviors. I don't know if he looked at me. So clearly, I think he worked with them. He didn't look. That's, that's a good point because, hey, hey, uh, Shay. Yeah, hi. That's, that's Shay. Hi, Shay. Uh, did we put the press back yeah. here? Is it there? All right, thank you. You guys got me? Yeah, it, it should help out. It's right back. Uh, okay, so the idea behind this we got it because crown prints, they get the name because of the feathers right on top of their head. So we thought we'd make, these are our own crown of golden feathers. <laughs> yeah. See you later, Doug. You got me a hat. Thanks for hanging. Yeah, well, it's like a crown. Yeah, but it's a hat for your head. What do you think? Should she wear it? Yeah. What about hoops? Yes. There it is. Quite a roll. That's it. glory. It speaks for itself. But think about it. Whenever he looks up, he can't miss you now, right? After it? Yeah, that's, that's the idea. So, thankfully, whenever he's done eating up there, whatever that is, um, he'll come right on home. You're pretty cool. It's, it's just not easy. Well, I guess not. He didn't do it yet. Try it. Try it. Okay. Maybe that'll help. All right. See you next time. Hope you can answer. Hey, Richard. Hey. What do you think, buddy? Right here. Here we go. Okay. There we go. Now we're still being. Okay. Hey, that's cool. Wait, hang on. Did this seriously just happen? Oh, the hat? Yeah. Um, unfortunately, no. That was a joke for all of us. <laughs> yeah. Over shopping. But I think it was really the training that finally paid off for the two of you. You're super proud of it. That was, that was incredible. That is for your play, everyone. And that's. Justin Timberlake from 2003. <laughs> <laughs> well played. Yeah, we'll put that to the side. Because as funny as the hat is, it's not really how we train the animals we work with, but it kind of gives you a glimpse into what we're willing to do to work on the relationships with our friends and coworkers. Thanks again, Lisa. But also, working and building the relationship with all of you, it's the whole reason why we get to come up here and do this show every day. We really want to pass on to all of you that there is still so much we all can do to help out wildlife every single day. That's right. And you know what? My favorite example is the story of the symbol of pride for the United States of America, the bald eagle. That's cool. Everyone I like you to meet Hope. Now, when Hope was younger, she actually sustained a wing injury when she was young out in the wild and wouldn't have been able to survive on her own anymore. So she came to live with us.
Park. Yeah, and it was people like all of us here today in the conservation efforts throughout North America that saved the bald eagle from the brink of extinction. Exactly. All their efforts paid off. The numbers of bald eagles were so high, they were officially taken off the endangered species. Woo! circling around me. Yeah. Whoa, that just threw me in the face. These birds are fun. My brother would lose his mind. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed our feathered friends in flight. Real cute show here at the Animal Kingdom. Now, if we can, we're gonna try and hustle. It's gonna be a long shot. We'll see if we can make it happen. Have a good day. Is yes, let's see if we can make it from Asia to Africa in five minutes. I think I can. I think I can. If you enjoyed the show, please hit that thumbs up, smack the like button. It really does help. If you're new to the channel, you just found us today, please subscribe. Or if you found us a few weeks ago and we're still auditioning, I hope we earned it. It really helps. We're so close to 8,000. So close. We also, I haven't talked about it all day, but we have an amazing Patreon, and I couldn't have this channel without all the Patreons, so thank you so much to all the Patreons out there. If you want to learn more about the Patreon program, go check out patreon.com backslash adventures by Carney. I love our monthly Zoom calls with the Patreons. Also, we're going to be doing Patreon exclusive every single week because we're starting a new show now it's for everybody but also there'll be an added bonus for patreons is i am happy to announce here on a stream for the first time we are starting a consistent show every single week we're going to call it mix it up mondays because we're going to do a little bit of everything but it'll be every single monday at 12 noon eastern time 9 a.m out on the west coast where we're just gonna uh hang out I'm turning my guest bedroom into a studio and we're gonna hang out every single Monday. I know a lot of you, the biggest thing I get from everybody is, when's your next stream gonna be? Can you do the same time every week? And unfortunately I can't with my schedule because it changes every week. But for the, from now up until I think Thanksgiving, I have every Monday around lunchtime, noon here, free. So we're gonna do anywhere from an hour to, it could be hour and a half, two hours, two and a half, three, who knows? But we're gonna do all things, mix it up Mondays. So maybe we'll make a cocktail or have a cocktail together. But we're gonna be mixing it up with our content as well. We'll talk Disney news, if anything new Disney news came out. We'll be discussing our plan for the week or what you wanna see, upcoming ideas. We'll just talk pop culture and life in general. We'll talk Universal, SeaWorld, all the theme parks. 
and we'll uh, interact with all of you. It's really going to be an interactive show where I'm keeping up with the chat. We're having an ongoing conversation. And I think it's going to be really cool, really special. It's just be a nice time for me to hang with all of you, kind of, uh, and also catch up with things. Me to just dedicate at least an hour to three hours and find out all things that are happening. Maybe we'll just talk. We'll talk some Disney history. We'll tell stories. I got stories for days. So mix it up Mondays starting this Monday, just a few days away, less than a week, 12 noon, every single week. And if you can't make it because you're at work, I get it. A lot of people are working Monday mornings at noon, but you could always come back and watch the replay or hop in during your break. Let's see, I don't know if this line is for this show or the next one. What's going on, Brad? How are you doing? Hanging in there. Another, another day in paradise. We're at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Yeah, it's beautiful. Favorite part, best part. That's what I say. Same thing. Is this for this show or the next one? This show. Oh, sweet. Normally starts getting like this, like 10 minutes before. Oh. Sweet. Michael Grady, what's going on? Says Pete. Hope you're having a great day so far. I'm having the best day. We're in Animal Kingdom. Melon, you couldn't be more right. <laughs> so the wildlife at Dag loved to mess with Pete. She's referring to our stream uh, at our last get together back on the April. Uh, we did the Disney's Animal Kingdom 25th anniversary. We did a meetup here. We hung out all week. And uh, when we were here doing a live stream on the anniversary, uh, I hit a squirrel run across my arm and knock over my drink. And it was uh, a very sad moment. Luckily, the kind bartender here, uh, we showed her the stream and she got a good laugh and made me a new one. All right, so I'm excited. We're going to get into the 12 o'clock show. Normally, you have to get here pretty early, at least 15, 20 minutes in advance. But since crowds have been so light, now that school's back in session, looks like we're going to get into the noon show. Back-to-back well, -back shows. I also highly recommend, if you're planning your trip or your day here at Disney's Animal Kingdom, put these shows in the middle of the day, kind of like we're doing, between 12 and 3. It's the hottest point of the day here in Florida. And you want to be indoors in the air conditioning give you a nice break also book those lunches between that you know 12 and 3 so get to the park early when it opens today the park opened uh early entry was at 8 30 9 o'clock to the general public get your solid three hours in and i would normally tell people start doing those shows like we just did a show but it was outside but this at noon then if i had a big family with the kids and everything like that i'd be planning that lunch after this if it's still hot or go do a ride outside <laughs> get your body temp back up and then drop it back down with some lunch inside Go back out, do something, and then drop it back down with an indoor show. This works out great because right after this, we can head over to Kilimanjaro Safari as we have a lightning lane. So we'll go jump over there and it stays working out. And when we get, exit that, we can do Gorilla Falls. We can go over to Rafiki's. It all is going to work out. Who says it's a half day park? We got here an hour after it opened and we're gonna be packed out with activities for a while. Hi. How many? We haven't even done Dino Land or Pandora. Crazy, so much to do here at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Oh, those fans feel glorious. I like this section we're going into. Big fan. Same section we were in uh, back in April when we did a live stream here.
Thanks for watching. So we're on our way into the Festival of the Lion King, a must-do show here at Disney's Animal Kingdom. We're in the right spot. Also, only eight likes away from 100. If you haven't hit that like button yet, help us out. Let's cross that 100 like mark. Hi, Laura. Bill's back from the doctor. Bill, you miss Pocahontas. I like that shirt idea, though. Laura, sending love from New York City. Love it. My old home. Well, to the lions. I take the warthogs and my new best friend. You're going to help me take this warthog session. All right, again. Listen. You're going to demonstrate the sound of the ESO warthogs for me. Yeah. All the way down. Spray your face to your tusks. And now make a snorty warthog sound. <laughs> Buddy, you need a tissue. All the way down. All right, turn this way. Warthogs, get your tusks up. And on the count of three, let's hear what you can do. One, two, three. Here we go, Lions. It is our turn. I'm here with my new friend, Christina. And Christina's going to give us her best lion imitation. All right, my friend. All's ready like a lion? Yes, I want to hear your best lion roar. Whoa! <laughs> good job, my friend. Stay with me. We're going to turn around and get everybody to put their paws up like Christina. Yes, and on the count of three, let's see some lions. Ready? One, two, three. And now that's a lion. Time for the elephants. This is Dennis from Columbus, Ohio. Dennis is our leader. All right, Dennis, get that arm up and see the elephant's trunk. Now, let's hear the call. <laughs> Dennis, that was an elephant we will never forget. <laughs> Very well, everyone. Trump's in the air. And on the count of three, let's trump it triumphant. One, two, three. Ah, uh, the mighty packager. Okay, okay, my turn, my turn. I'm next. Everyone, this is Ben from San Diego. And Ben is going to show us what a giraffe sounds like. Okay, giraffe, go. <laughs> nice job. You know, I didn't know what a giraffe sounded like either. So I looked it up, and it said a low bleeding sound, kind of like a sheep. Okay, giraffe, go. <laughs> well done, Ben! Nice job! All right, stay with me. Let's turn around. All right, giraffes, next in the air. And flee. <laughs> and there you have giraffes. Very well, then. Now that you know your animal sounds, I think we're all set. Watch us. We'll make sure you're cued and ready to go. Hey, everyone. I think I hear them coming. Wonderful. Right on time. On the count of three, let's use those sounds to call them in. All together now. One, One two, two, three. three.
I present to you His Majesty, the Lion King. Welcome, everyone. It's me, Simba. You've all picked a very special day to visit. You see, today, we've come to town for a big celebration. And you, my friends, are invited to join in the fun. Come on, everybody, get her ready to clap your palms, stomp your hooves, and ruffle your feathers as we welcome you to the Festival of the Lion King. Let the procession begin.
from a record breaking two million years at the bottom of the evolutionary ladder? Let's hear it for. Hey! 
successions. Even you can be caught unawares. So prepare for a chance of a lifetime. Be prepared for success to lose.
time for joyous celebration. Boy, all things exist in balance. It is then we are all connected in the great circle, the circle of life.
Lion King, one of my favorite shows here at Disney, let alone inside Disney's Animal Kingdom. You've never seen, you gotta come see it. Festival of the Lion King, amazing. And they do this sometimes up to eight times a day. 
Well, we're off to a safari, so don't go anywhere. The stream's just getting better and better. Let's go check out some animals. We have a lightning lane for Kilimanjaro safaris. So let's head over there. What's fun is when I was in the show too, you get to walk right by the floats. You can wave hello to the mighty pachyderm, to Simba, Pumba. And I don't know if this giraffe has a name, but I'm gonna call her princess. Love this show so much. One of the best shows, a must do if you're coming here. Put it in your schedule. Make sure you get here about 15 to 20 minutes before the show to get a good seat. We were very lucky getting in. We were the last, I want to say, 10 people led into the theater. And we were in the back row of the deepest section. This is the deepest section over here. But a great, not only just a great break in the day and you get some air conditioning and shade, but you get an incredible performance from an amazing cast that does live singing, dancing, fire, ballet, acrobatics. The list goes on. And you get these cool little picture spots. Look, oh, it's waving. Oh, that's the cutest thing. You just waved to her. Oh my God, I'm obsessed with that. That was so cute. Melon asked a fun question during the show. By the way, that's the only way to get me quiet for 30 minutes is put me in the show. Yeah, I looked over... But uh, Melon said, if you could do anything in the show, what would you do? And it was a good question for everybody in the chat. I liked everyone's answers. I'd probably be a tumble monkey because I'm ridiculous. I like to bounce around. But the fire is a cool one, too. I don't have those kind of skills. I, do, I used to love playing with fire as a child. It was terrible. But uh, now that I'm an adult, it's not as thrilling. Tumble monkey or maybe just Timon. But Tumble Monkey, definitely more my personality. All right. Ooh, that heat hits you. Thanks for everybody who tuned in during the show, hanging out. We're not done yet. We're still heading out to Kilimanjaro Safari and Rafiki's Planet Watch, as promised. It's going to be a long one. But we're hanging in there together, surviving the heat. I do, have, I do want to grab a little bit of water. Maybe I'll stop by, say hi to Bob over at the Dawa Bar, grab some water, refill the water bottle. I'm just crushing water bottles. But if you're enjoying the stream, please hit that like button. We are one like away from 100. And we could blow past it if you want. I would love that. But it really does help. Hit that thumbs up. Smash the like whatever the kids are saying. And if you like stuff like this and just feel good streams, please consider subscribing. We'd love to have you. You saw people during the show in the chat, if you're watching the chat, talking about we're doing a meetup October 1st through the 4th. It's completely free. We just like to twice a year get together with friends of the channel and put faces to names or say hi to faces and names that we've seen before, but we only get together every few times a year. And it's October 1st through the 4th. If you're here at Disney, just come. You don't have to sign up. You don't have to do anything. All the details are on the website, adventuresbycarney.fun. Steve and Bob hanging over here. Long line. I don't want to interrupt. Let's see if I can grab water over here instead. Bump, 
This is the Dawa Bar right by the Tusker House sign here in Africa. If you're ever nearby looking for a, a Bev. We're going to hop over here. Uh, limbo lower now. So if you're looking for water like I am, you can just ask any bartender or any quick service. But also over here, they have a water refill station. More water coming in. And it fits right in my pockets. One thing I really like about this water bottle is it fits in cup holders and my pocket. Keeps my ice water nice and cold all day. All right. Let's keep it moving. Happy birthday. Back it up, back it up. It is a fantastic Thursday. I hope everyone's having a great week. And if not, we're turning it around right now. It's Thursday, it's almost Friday. So close to the weekend. Besides being live today, thanks for hanging out with us, by the way. We are also gonna be live tomorrow at Epcot, so you don't wanna miss it. Again, if you're subscribed, even if you're already subscribed, you might not have that bell on. You wanna hit the bell, turn on all notifications, that way you get updated whenever we go live or if something crazy happens like last week we did the moana preview they let us live stream when we did the cast member previews and we just had to go live on the spot no warning but those who had all notifications turned on they were there first thanks lily Here we go. Kilimanjaro Safaris, the unpaved roads of Harambe Wildlife Reserve, pass through a rough and rugged terrain. You may experience some humps and bumps, so be ready. We're ready. During the Feathered Friends and Flight show we watched earlier, we saw the uh, that crowned crane, and there's two of them right here while you wait in line, right there. There's also a hidden Mickey on this ride. We'll point it out as we go. I tell everyone who's coming here, they gotta do this. Some of my friends are coming, they go, ah, oh, we didn't have time. And I'm like, ugh, oh, it's the best. No, I can't, I can't Just this safari is bigger than the Magic Kingdom. Just this attraction. How do you skip it? Where you will stand just before you board your vehicle. 
Pick a side, any side. Some type of Steam Safari Guest, you are entering a reserve of natural wildlife. Please do not throw or drop anything from your vehicle, as the animals might eat of it. Yes, treat the animals with that respect. Is this all right? Come on. Well, maybe not my ride, but the next one. Yes, uh, another we were talking about during the show and I couldn't respond is during that meetup, October 1st through the 4th, again, all information's on adventuresbycarney.fun, but uh, one of the nights we're doing HHN over at Universal, Halloween Horror Nights. Not for everyone, I would say you need to definitely have older children, it's very scary. But we have the best tour guide, Phenomenal Brandy will be with us, and she knows, I wanna say more than some of the team members at Universal. She is the best tour guide, knows all things HHN, and just history of Universal and the theme park and anything scary. So she's awesome, and she will be there. So it's like we're gonna have our own tour guide. It's, I'm, I can't wait. But we'll also be at Disney the other three days. Plus we'll be doing some, uh, our our uh <laughs> what do we gonna call this annual mini golf throwdown everyone's welcome to play oh thank you thanks all right we're getting on the next ride Is this us? Vehicle 29? That's my birthday. Yes. <laughs> Brandy, there you go. Mini Golf Monday Tournament of Champions. Yeah, safari time. Melon wants to see some rhinos? Oh, we'll definitely see some rhinos. Feel free to store those down below by your feet. Feeling the right side of the truck. You're going to want to watch your hands, arms, feet, and legs. Doors will be closing in just a moment. There you go. Thanks so much. Here we go. All right, I'll see you in two shakes of a cheetah's tail. Oh. We're all the same for all day. It's one day. That means... Swim day. Let's go. All right, well, John, boy, everybody, good afternoon. How are we doing today? Right on. Welcome aboard to Symbol One. My name is Mike. I'll be your safari guide here at the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. I plan on taking any pictures. Just make sure you hold on to those cameras tightly. If anything falls out, I'm not allowed to go out and pick it up. Well, let's head on in. We're going to start off in the Little Waturi Forest. Uh, keep a sharp eye out. It can be difficult to find forest animals. They tend to have natural colors and markings that help them blend in pretty well with their surroundings. See? Bongos, straight ahead. Let's see if we see some uh, okapis up here. There's an okapi back behind All that the tree. Right, you know, okapi hiding behind some bamboo. At first glance, a lot of people think that they're related to a zebra, but they're actually the only known relative of a giraffe. You gotta see the head. The head's very similar in shape to a giraffe's head. They even have long tongues. In fact, the okapi's tongue is so long that they can lick its own ears. Up on the left is a ghost of the forest. There's large animals of bongo. Bongos get the nickname the ghost of the forest because they're rarely ever seen. And both male and females have horns, and their horns lean back. It actually helps them run swiftly through all this thick brush. All right, let's see if there's anything hanging around by the watering hole. They're usually pretty good gathering spots for the animals. Sometimes, if we're lucky, we might get to see something rare, like maybe a black rhino. Yes. I say maybe because they're very scarce. Oh, there's some, uh... Poachers have killed hundreds of thousands of them with their horns, and today there's less than 5,000 left in the entire world. See some greater ku uh, kudu on the right there, and all the way out to the left, there's a black rhino. Not exactly the side you want to look at, but you know, there it is. Some seal, side of the storage right there, yeah. Yeah, I see the kudu up on the right there, that's a female. 
He tells you because she doesn't have any horns. Only the male coot. Yeah, if we could find that. There's right another black runner laying down across the way. We'll stop in a moment. Camera's ready. If you look at the mouth, you notice that the black runner here has got a pointed upper lip. It's called the prehensile lip, and these are like fingers of grass leaves off of trees. So to live out in forested areas like this as browsers. It's a big animal too. That runner there weighs 3,000 pounds, and it can charge up to 35 miles per hour. Wow. It's pretty quick for an animal that size. Uh, Smaller of the two rhinos species, though. White rhino is 5,000. Oh, Black rhino is 3. Oh, wow. Greater oh. Kudo crossing. Ladies first. <laughs> At their shoulder, they're about 5 feet tall. It makes them the second tallest species of antelope. All right, let's go ahead and head on down to the Safi River. The river's a really good spot to see some Nile hippos. We usually have pretty good luck seeing them in the waters ahead. I mean, they are pretty big, even at birth. And when the hippo's born, there he weighs 85 pounds. Now, a full grown male, he's going to tip the scales at around 5,000 pounds. And just because they're very big, it doesn't mean that they're always easy to see. They are known to hold their breath in the water for up to eight minutes. See some pink bat pelicans up ahead. See those big green and white birds. There's a hippo on the right. It's hard to see though. We'll see if we can make it right more. Two of them Let's keep right checking the water because they usually come out of it at night. It's normally when they feed. And every night hippos will eat up to 90 pounds of vegetation. It's a lot of salad. Yeah, look deep in the water too. A lot of times what they'll do, the hippos will actually sink to the bottom of the river. We kind of walk along the floor or we'll even just push off and glide. That's why the name Hippopotamus translates to river horse. Alright, uh, looks like there's one in the water up ahead by the second island over here. See it just below the surface? Yeah, we'll stop in a moment. Oh, there it goes. Pop its head up for a little air. Have you ever seen a group of hippos? They're called a bloat. Some people on the Wild Africa Trek tour. Oh, check this out. As we go over the bridge, look to the left. Down below, there's Nile crocodiles. So make sure we do stay seated, though, please. Now, these crocs, they will snap their jaws shut with a pressure of up to 2,000 pounds per square inch. Yeah, the so water falls back on. Their prey with than any they're huge. And they don't look like it from this high up, but they're about 16 feet long. And if you think about it, it's almost as long as a giraffe is tall. Alright, well, so far I've been to the forest and the river, next to head on out to the savannah. The savannah is a completely different ecosystem, and out there we'll find a whole lot of different animals. Now, speaking of difference, coming up on the right, we'll get a closer look at an ancient baobab tree. They're also known as upside-down trees, and it's because the branches look a lot like the roots. But like I said, they're ancient. They lived for about 2,000 years. And this tree over here is already halfway there. All right, let's head into the savannah. Let's see what animals are hanging around out here today. Oh, there's a giraffe up ahead. And there's several different species of giraffe. The ones we'll see out here on the side. The side giraffe have an irregular spot pattern on their body. I got a pretty close look at another one up ahead here. And right now they're doing what they do best, eating. They can eat up to 20 hours a day. And that doesn't leave a lot of time for sleep, you know. At that, you only sleep for maybe 30 minutes a day. And it's not even 30 minutes at once either. Just a few minutes here and a few minutes there. The cool thing though is when they sleep, they usually stand up while they sleep. It's very rare to see them lay on the ground. And it takes them a few moments before they get back up on all fours, so it tends to make them more vulnerable to predators. But if you do see a giraffe lay on the ground, it's a good sign. It just means that they're very comfortable with their surroundings. Alright, over to the left. Inside the cave, there's a pack of African wild dogs laying out. And the wild dogs are also known as painted dogs or painted wolves, and they're the most successful hunters in Africa. 
And their success rate when they hunt is even better than the big cats. When these guys hunt, they hunt together as a pack. They'll just take turns chasing after their prey until it drops in exhaustion. Also coming up ahead on the left is some sable antelope. The sables are the official emblem for our reserve. Now those horns are about five feet long and they are not afraid to use them. And they'll butt heads with each other for courtship or dominance displays. They'll even use them to fend off potential predators. Also now on the left, we see some wildebeest. Do you know what the nickname for wildebeest? No? Not close. It's actually new. And it's spelled G-N-U. They get the name from the grunting sound that they make. So you kind of think, like, how a cow would moo, wildebeest will do. And the name itself, wildebeest, it is an Afrikaans word. Translated, it means... Well, it means wildebeest. Another giraffe munching away up ahead on the left. Now, do you know how many vertebrae they have in those big, long necks? Seven. Seven, Same right? as us. Just like us. But there's just a lot bigger. Well, compared to us, everything's a lot bigger on a giraffe, even the hearts. Uh, get this in a full-grown male. His heart weighs 25 pounds, and it's two feet long. And they have the highest blood pressure of any mammal. They kind of have to, though. They need pressure to get the blood all the way up that big, long neck. And if you're curious what the actual blood pressure is, it's about 300 over 180. Ooh, oh, they'll get the zebra up the head. Let's go take a look at that. Another giraffe coming up the head, too. These are Hartman's mountain zebras. They're one of three different zebra species. Unlike common zebras, you see the stripes don't go all the way on the belly. They might catch a little glimpse of the baby over there, too. Now, when that baby zebra was first born, it was up and running within 15 minutes. See how the wild when they're born, they're born during the migration, so they have to learn to run quickly so they can keep up with everybody. All right, well, let's keep on going. Let's see what other animals we'll find out here on the reserve. Another giraffe hide behind some trees coming up on our left. More will to be straight ahead in the distance. <laughs> As you come around his next turn on the right, I need some of those palm trees. Some more to pass the baby giraffe like right next to us. Tower. It's pretty fitting. Little for baby a giraffe animal. coming up. All right, but we spent a lot of time looking at giraffes. I think it's time we start making our way towards elephant country. What do you say? Sound good? All right. Yeah, it's one day. Let's go. And we'll also swing around by Monkey Point. See if we can maybe find some mandrels. They are the most colorful monkeys in the world. Oh, but real quick, we're coming up on the rest of Man Coley cattle. Look at the horns of these cows. Those horns are about six feet long. And right when they meet the heavy, be as big as 20 inches around, look up there to the right. All right, like I said, let's head on over to Monkey Point. Oh, by the way, if you do see a mandrel, just please do not tease the monkeys. You know what they throw. Hey, you left that one. Trust me, that's a souvenir you don't want. It's a good spot of mantra. Now, this is Monkey Point on the left. Mandrels, though, they can be shy. Sometimes they'll hide in the trees or behind the rocks. Last time around, as we saw the new baby. Yeah, it looks like they want to be shy at the moment. All right, we'll look good in the title. We'll keep on going out to elephant country. Oh, we'll go out to the right, there's an elephant. Let's see if we get a little closer look up ahead here. Uh, there's a couple of them back there in that corner. And it's a small herd right there. But let's go further in elephant country. We'll see if we can maybe find an even bigger herd. Yeah, let's go check so out they're the actually elephants. on the bridge. We're going to go underneath. The elephants will go out there and leave the clay for the minerals. It's kind of like taking a vitamin. And those clay pits will be just under the side of this old bridge. This old bridge will be of absolutely nothing to worry about. Why do you all look so nervous? Come on, you're on vacation. They're supposed to relax. As we get to the clay pits up ahead, we'll see a lot of tusk marks out here. By the way, both male and female elephants do have ivory tusks. And even on reserves, they're being targeted by poachers for them. So they're protecting 
contact the elephants, they've invited scientists out here to study their vocal patterns. And by studying how they talk to one another, we're learning what it is that we need in order to survive. And one of the interesting things that we found out through these studies is that the elephants are afraid of bees. Now, we've used this knowledge to help out some farmers. They've been having issues with elephants going onto their farms and destroying their crops. So to keep the elephants out without harming them, we've helped the farmers set up beehive fences. That way, as the elephants get near, they hear the bees, and they go around everything. So this way, they don't destroy any of the crops, and they don't get hurt. Also, the farmers have an additional crop with the honey that's produced. Now, there's a couple of elephants out here on the left. There's one right next to us, another one way up ahead. Now, this is what we call a bachelor herd. These are two bulls. That's pretty rare, too, because usually when the boys reach maturity, they usually leave and go off on their own. Right now, so they're kind of keeping separate for the moment. A lot of times, they put on a dominance display called trunk wrestling. So when they wrap their trunks around one another, they'll start pushing each other back and forth. Spoiler alert, the bigger one always wins. Most of the other ones down towards the watering hole, so we'll make our way down there, see if we can get a better look at it over there. But you notice the elephant's got a lot of dirt in their bodies. It's basically sunblock. And they get sunburned pretty easily, so they'll just throw dirt and mud all over themselves. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, see another elephant way up ahead in the distance past those baobon trees. Now, these young bulls we're looking at, they're not even fully grown. They're only teenagers. But when they're done growing, they're going to tip the scales at around 13,000 pounds. And by then, they'll be eating about 300 pounds of food every day. All right, maybe we'll get a better look at that one as they get around by the flamingos up ahead here. These are the greater flamingos, they're the palest of their species. When they hatch, they're not even pink or gray. They eat a lot of brine shrimp, which is high in beta carotene, and it's the beta carotene that turns them pink. It looks like we're going to be hanging out here for just a little bit. It looks like we got a little traffic jam up ahead. So when this happens, it usually means that there's an animal that's in the road. So the driver out there has got to wait till they move. Now, it usually just takes a few seconds. Sometimes it could be a few minutes. No worst case scenario, we'll hang out here for a few hours. Well, maybe within that time, the yeah, will turn around so we can see his face. So up here, if you've ever seen this hut, this is where you have lunch on the savannah during the Wild Africa Trek. It's very cool, right in the middle of savannah. It's a bit pricey, but if you're ever able to do it, uh, it's one of my favorite tours. That and the Keys to the Kingdom over at Magic Kingdom are my top two tours. Oh, yeah, the elephant just turned around a little bit. See a little bit of its side of its face there. Oh, turn back around. Now you see him kind of fanning his ears a little bit. Do you know why he's doing that? Cool down. So he cools off. If you look at the outer part of the ears, you'll see they have a lot of blood vessels in them. So when he fans his ears like that, it exposes those blood vessels to the air. By doing this, he could actually lower his body temperature by as much as 15 degrees. It's pretty cool watching them use their trunks. I mean, they can curl their trunks up, they can swing them around, they can twist them. They can use it to pick up dirt and throw it on their bodies. And yeah, they have over 40,000 muscles in their trunks that allow them to move it the way they do. Now, it usually takes them a while before they can control all those muscles, especially when they're younger. So it's not uncommon to see baby elephants run around and actually trip over their own trunks. All right, looks like things are moving up ahead, so we're going to do the same here. This island is ahead. Yeah, Mickey, if you look at the uh, island. Yeah, usually it's going to take the flamingos here about a year or two before they fully develop their pink feathers. All right, let's head on over to White Rhino territory now. White Rhinos, they used to be one of our greatest success stories. But even today, their horns are highly valued on the black market. Every time a poacher sells a rhino horn, they take that money. Then they go out and they buy more sophisticated weapons to hunt even more rhinos. It's a vicious cycle. It's a very difficult to break. Oh, 
looks like something big is rolling around in the mud out there. So if there's any white rhinos around, they shouldn't be too hard to find. They are very big animals. Yeah, remember the black rhinos we saw earlier? A white rhino is almost twice their size. And speaking of which, there's one on the right. Yeah, you can see it's really not white in color. And it itself comes from the Afrikaans word fight. Fight means wide. It's because the white rhino really just has a wide mouth. And also a very poor eyesight. You really have a lot more senses of hearing and smell. Now, we might be able to catch up to that rhino again a little later on. I think I know where it might be heading towards. If you look up here on the hill to the left, way in the back underneath some of the bushes, there's some cheetahs laying out there. See it laying on its side. One just kind of popped its head up a little bit. Way in the back on top of the left. And cheetahs are the fastest land animals. On average, they can sprint up to 60 miles per hour. They're also daytime hunters. They use their sense of sight when they hunt, not their sense of smell. They got the cats. That Wild Africa Trek Tour just cut up this little road right here. You can see the back of the truck right there. Those are the trucks for the Wild Africa Trek Tour. All right, let's head over to the Kopis. Kopis are a big rock formation, and sometimes you'll see lions out here. The lions, they like to go up on the big rocks to scan the savannah for prey. So if we're going to see any lions today, some more... So back when they built this, this used to look like a big but Donald Duck. That they are nocturnal animals. That would be... But they move some rocks around. Oh, there's a few white rhinos coming up ahead. Now, if they stay right where they're at, we'll get an even closer look at them here in just a little bit. Oh, you know, we're going to stop over here. Got a good look at a young rhino. Look at that baby right there. Big babies. Two of them. Actually, three. Got a three-year-old and two two-year-olds right there. Now, when they're done growing, they're going to tip the scales at 5,000 pounds. All right, let's swing around these rocks ahead of us. You will come back around and try to see them again in a moment. Yeah, not seeing much for lions right now. Like I said, they're nocturnal, so maybe come back a little later on. You might get better luck then. Oh, look at this. Uh, warthogs. Warthogs. Warthogs are the largest burrowing mammals. Oh, don't call them Pumbaa. <laughs> I mean, no, so you know what Pumbaa means, foolish one. In reality, they're very smart. In fact, the warthogs are so smart that when they go into their burrows, you know to back into them. That way, in case any predator try to attack, they're going to think twice when they see those razor-sharp tusks. And it looks like we had a really close look at some more rhinos coming up ahead here. Also, I see a water buck. It's a, sh a shaggy grant. Well, it's coming up on the right as you go around the next turn. Well, when water bucks go into the water, they ferment to grease and secretion, which is thought to make them waterproof. Look at this crash. By the way, when you see a group of rhinos like this, it's called a crash. Look at that, 5,000 pound animals just a few feet away from us. And you see what separates the rhinos from the truck? Make sure we stay seated, please. Please sit down. Yeah, what separates us from them is the gas pedal. All right, keep it on for us. Coming up on some of their eggs over here on the right. They usually run straight far from I them. just saw one. It was terrifying. And the eggs are going to be right all over here on the right side. Look at the, the tall grasses are. And those are the largest bird eggs. Each one down there weighs about three pounds. And you get an idea of how big that is? One of them is about equal in size. Two dozen chicken eggs. And those shells are so hard that any one of us here can gently stand on one that won't even break. Let's go find some goats. Coming up ahead, we're going to see some of the newest kids on the block. We call the Nigerian dwarf goats. They've been a very welcome addition to the reserve. But they're a small size. They don't take up a lot of space. You'll see them in a moment. They're pretty adorable. Look on top of the uh, hill here on the left. Somewhere on the porch over here, too. There are some babies out here, too, but they're hard to tell apart from the adults now. I mean, they're going to grow pretty fast. And even when they're fully grown, they're still fun size. 
When these little guys get playful, they'll jump up and down, and then they'll start butting each other in the head. And when they do that, it's a way for them to establish their dominance, and it even helps them mature as they age. Scratching his back on the tree. I love it. All right, everybody. Well, it looks like our safari is coming to the end. So I'm going to drop you off at the warden's post. I hope you had a great time today. I want to thank you very much for choosing Kilimanjaro safaris. And please do come back again soon. Because no safaris are ever the same. The animals definitely make sure. I want you to remember, though, that wherever you live, there's ways you can protect your local wildlife and their habitats. You can even help conserve the habitats of some of the animals that we've seen here today. And it's really easy, too. All you're going to do is recycle your old electronics. Devices like our cell phones and laptop computers contain a metallic ore called coltan. And it's commonly mined in areas where some of these animals live. So whenever it's time for you to upgrade your devices, go ahead and recycle the old ones. That way, the more we all do that, the less the animals will lose their homes. So this water serves a few purposes, but one main one that I like is to clean the wheels as to not bring yeah, well, still out the safari to the real world and the real world to the safari. I do recommend that you visit the Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail. It's an easy hike with a lot of great animal viewing opportunities. Also, go check out our Picky's Planet Watch. It's got to take the train to get out there. It's called the Wildlife Express, and it runs every five to seven minutes. All right, but our stop's going to be coming up ahead, so now be a good time to start gathering up our belongings. Before you leave, make sure you double check your seats too. A lot of times wallets and cell phones will bounce out of pockets. So just take a few extra seconds to make sure that you have everything with you. That way nothing gets left behind. Now here in Harambe, we don't like to say goodbye. So we don't. Instead we say Quaharini, it's Swahili and it means to go well. So, Quaharini, everybody, go well, go wild, and have a great day out there today. And again, if you're a wilderness explorer, remember, you've been riding on board the symbol one. That's S-I-M-B-A and the number one. Chombo. Santa Sana, thank you. Nice job, good safari. Feet and legs, doors will be opening. Watch steps down and have a great day today, everybody. Let's get this up. All right. Good safari, good safari. Safari so good. Let's see if there's any gorillas out hanging out. When you exit the safari, you could, uh, instead of following the trail back to civilization, you could kind of head over here and see if they find gorillas. We'll go oh, this way because they're taking pictures and that's cute. Yeah. Well, it's Oscar. Gorillas. Gorillas! Let's see, normally he hangs out down here or by the waterfall, but if you go on the Gorilla Falls Trail on the other side, this is the other side of the hill where all the gorillas play. So if you do the Gorilla Falls Trail, you come around the other side of this hill. But there's a bunch out there. No problem. Hi, Hope. Good to see you, Hope. Hope is a big fan of the Main Street Electrical Parade, which is returning. If you are out on the West Coast. Yes, yeah, Scott, I gave that fun fact earlier, but it's worth repeating, is that the safari is so awesome because that one attraction is larger than the entire Magic Kingdom. How cool is that? Chief Leaf in the house, just mousing around is here. Good to see so many familiar names. If you're new, feel free to say hi, too. Or if you're a new subscriber, let us know. We'll show you some love. You don't have to. Shout out to all the lurkers, too. I know people are at work or at home. And they just throw on the stream. I appreciate it.
Hope, speaking of announcements, we announced uh, we're going to start a new weekly show every week, Monday at noon. You want to make sure you're subscribed to get the bell on, hit all notifications for the live streams. You never know where to go live, and I drop shorts all the time. But everyone always asks, Pete, can you do a show at the same time? We're not a show, but can you do something the same day and the same time every week? So we're doing it. We finally found some time that we could carve out. Mondays at 12, we're going to be at my place where we talk old things, Disney news, but also other announcements, just general news, pop culture, anything I just want to talk about. We're going to call it Mix It Up Mondays because we're literally just going to mix things up, see what's happening, have some fun, talk about our plans for the upcoming week and other things that are going on in life, like our meetup, October 1st through the 4th here. We were talking about that. You can find out more information at adventuresbycarney.fun. This is where you can find the awesome merch, like this water bottle, this shirt, this hat. What else? Oh, I haven't talked about my socials. Between the streams, besides the Discord, I'm on social media if you want to follow. It's at Official Carney on Instagram, at your WDW guy on Twitter. Adventures by Carney is the TikTok, and Adventures by Carney is the Patreon. If you want to support the Patreon, that would be amazing. Couldn't do this channel without the Patreons. It's okay. Just missed it. We'll go back to the same spot I was before. Grab a little sip of water. Hey, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you're having a great day. This is the water bottle, by the way. Uh, shout out to Bill for getting this done. It's made by, you can't, I don't know if you can see this. Let me see if I can find the right lighting. Dugout Mugs. Huge, awesome company. So good. What else do we have to talk about? So yeah, new show Mondays, This starting this Monday, 12 noon Eastern time every week. Uh, we got the meetup October 1st and the 4th. If you're gonna be in town, again, it's completely free if you wanna find our schedule. We'll be releasing more details as it gets closer with more exact where we'll be, but we'll have the park and the day and what's going on. Just come hang out, come introduce yourself. Again, whether you're in town by chance, if you wanna plan a trip, come on down. What else do we have to talk about? I think, I'm, I think I'm doing a good job covering everything I'm supposed to, right? I get told after the streams what, what I missed. Yeah, Discord, we have an amazing Discord community. That's free too. Everything's free. I mean, except for the merch, but it supports the channel. If you want to support the channel, there's merch, there's the Patreon. Uh, we have a Venmo, a Cash App, a PayPal, all listed down below in the description, if you want to. It's a crazy world out there. If you want to help out, great. But if not, I just appreciate being here. Hitting the like button, subscribing, telling a friend, sharing. It all's, it's all great. It's all fantastic. It's all wonderful. What did I miss uh, in the chat here during the safari? Let's see. Let me scroll up a little bit and see what was happening. Great safari. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're also going to be doing HHN during that meetup with Brandy, who is the ultimate tour guide when it comes to all things HHN and Universal. Uh, Maureen Long says, fun fact, I leave your videos on for my dog while I'm at work, so you get some extra views. I love your videos. Thank you so much, Maureen. That's awesome. I think everyone should do that. Leave the streams on. As a matter of fact, we have playlists. I don't know if you know that. But there's a bunch of different playlists. Like, if you like some of the Dragon Con content, we have a Dragon Con playlist. If you like just Animal Kingdom, we have Animal Kingdom playlist. Just Epcot, just Universal. Uh, we have a playlist that literally just says everything. So if you want to just keep a playlist running for your pets while you're gone, totally do it. But that's awesome. Thanks, Maureen. I'll also back, I'll be back on the uh, Pete McDevitt show, talking all things NFL starting in October. I'm also a, a fan of the football, the American football. I hear the train coming, but before we get in there, let's just see what else I missed here in the chats. Bum, bum. I love the music here at Animal Kingdom. Uh, yeah, I'm, I scroll back too far, but I'm going back down. The Lion King show, Festival of the Lion King, always gives me goosebumps too. Uh, so many touching moments. I guess we should get in the corral. They're hurting us. If you've never done Rafiki's Planet Watch, well, we're about to do it, so you can come experience it with us, but Petting Zoo, Animal Hospital, 
you learn how to draw animals, or I should say Disney characters, but usually they're Disney characters that are animals. Weem away is here in the chat as well. That was great. I'm staying very optimistic about the country bears. All the new things. I'm optimistic on everything until it happens. I don't like to prejudge, you know? Here comes our ride. Thanks again, Laura. Brandy, I can't wait to see Phantom Manor as well. I want to experience it. She says it's a life-changing attraction for me. That's so cool. Look at that. Glenn Ritchie's here. Do I see Glenn and Suzanne in the house hanging out with us? Love the Ritchie fam. Oh, Laura, we'll have to meet up. We'll be probably be around the parks on the 30th, too. You never know. Check the social medias, check the Discord. You can always find out where I am. I try to give people a little bit of notice. Brandy's already done every HHN house multiple times already. That's amazing. Yeah, hopefully we can catch up, Laura. Again, easy way to find out where I am are the socials uh, and also the Discord. Discord and the socials. Discord's free. <laughs> Steven Noon says, the, uh, also during the meetup, the ABC Mini Golf Invitational. Is it the fifth one already? Hi, We're also doing on October 1st, Epcot. It's the Epcot's anniversary of the day, but also Boys to Men at Night, one of my favorite acts during the Eats to the Beat concert series during the International Food and Wine Festival. We'll also be at Epcot tomorrow. If anyone's around in town, want to say hi, come on by. Also, our buddy Piano Rob will be at the Rose and Crown tomorrow. Glenn, thanks for posting the website. <laughs> I like that too, uh, Laura. So it's funny how the animals look at the people. Like, yeah, what are you guys doing here? conversation. I got to get into the AI world. Here we go. Let's come on ride the train. You know my uncle tied a Then we had a taco ball conversation. Oh, I missed that. I'll just sit here. Just rock the front row. Yeah, shout out to Peaches. Hope you're feeling better, Peaches. <laughs> Part of a, we're looking, there's a whole conversation about Taco Bell during the safari in the chat here. Yeah, uh, none of the Disney parks here. There is one at Universal City Walk in Hollywood over in California, but not here. Tomorrowland Traveler back hanging out with us. If you're looking to make travel plans, I always recommend using a Disney travel agent. We have like five of them in the Discord. But if you're looking for one that, uh, an easy way to find one, you just go to the tomorrowlandtraveler.com. He's awesome. He's got his own YouTube channel. Uh, and I can say he is a good friend of mine. So I will be a or cheaper as well as you get all that information that a travel agent can give you. Like what days to do what, if you have any questions, not so scary or Christmas party. I 
can see it, um, repost it on the Discord or send it to me directly. Hey, Don, welcome back. Chief, I'm not skipping over your bears and bugs. I'm, I'm excited for Zootopia. Um, again, I'm staying optimistic. I was never a fan of the Bugs Life show. I like the movie, so I don't mind it going at all. But some people like it. So I'm very excited about that. Bears had to go, but it needed love for sure. Gen V, what's going on? Happy Thursday. Makai, what's going on? <laughs> Glenn, you hate yourself, Pete. I guess I need this AI paper. It's so funny. All right, we are moving. Greetings, friends. Moogle's back. What's up, Moogle? All right, we are headed to Rafiki's Planet Watch. We are leaving Harambe. Off we go. If you haven't hit the like button, please help out. Yes, you can us. All right, we're definitely going to go find Tubbs. I still don't know which one exactly is Tubbs, but I'm sure you guys can help me out. If you ever run any of the run Disney events, if you do the Animal Kingdom race, you actually run backstage. I wish they had bears to petting zoo. Well, these are new. Finally, they put something up that's relevant. Not a lot to see here. Also, be sure to check out the animation experience of live animals from one of our makers. Standing passion for conservation. He believed it was important that we protect our wildlife and preserve our water. Disney and his animators follow care. Smells like animals over here. We are now approaching conservation station at the Vegas Planet Watch. We were safely in the safety of the ground. All the way back against the ground. And the It's the elephant building and the giraffe building is right over there. You can see with the uh, staircases for a reason. Uh, the stream, I just checked it. Is it better now or worse or the same? Go do Rafiki's Planet Watch. They got the Pazoo here. Like I said, you can see the animal hospital. You can learn a lot. So it's great for the little ones. Hope I saw it and I read it. We're good to go. I know you love that parade. Thanks for the heads up.
for those who are coming and going, I wish you an amazing rest of your day. We're gonna be hanging out here for a little bit longer. We're just arriving at Rafiki's Planet Watch. But I appreciate you spending some time with me today on your Thursday, it means a lot to me. We'll also be live tomorrow at Epcot, if you wanna join us then. I'm not sure exactly what time. I do have some appointments and meetings in the morning. A little bit of running around to do between seven and one-ish. Should hopefully be done by one-ish. If it ends early, we'll get to the park earlier. If it ends later, we'll get to the park when we can. But the best way to find out, like I said, is make sure you subscribe, have that bell turned on, hit all notifications, and follow the socials. I post on the socials too. The Instagram is at official carney. The Twitter is your WDW guy. And the TikToks Adventures by Carney, the Patreons Adventures by Carney. And a big shout out to all the Patreons. They are amazing. And I couldn't do this without them. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Let's see what animals are out and about. All right. Which one's Tubbs, Brandy? Brandy said, I got to pet Tubbs. See if we can go find tubs. Hi. Yeah. Okay, backs and bellies. Here we go. Are you tubs? Hey, friend. How's it going? This is nice. A goat therapy. Hi, how's it going? I don't know if you're tubs or not, but Brandy's gonna tell me. Are either of you tubs? Thanks for posting the links, Don. He's mostly all white, okay. Goats are the goat, Chris says. What's up, Chris? He's got a big belly. Well, me too. All right. We're on the hunt for tubs. Oh, we got some mini horses out here. Wait, this has got to be tubs. Up on top of the platform, getting some love. This has got to be, this has got to be him. Is this Tubbs? This is Lou. Oh, it's Tubbs Lou. Is all base. He's gonna be probably somewhere over there. All right. Okay, yep. All right. He's a big favorite of the, the stream. Uh, Everyone's asking for Tubbs. <laughs> oh, we got some pigs out here, too. I just love that they're all just hanging out, laying around on the playground. <laughs> These two, get out of my way. Just give them a bump. This looks like top is beige, white mark, nice big belly. This has gotta be tubs. These are both pretty beige. This goat's just hanging out. What a life. These goats getting all the love all day long. This is the life. I would also say if you come here, be careful where you walk. There is a, the animals are allowed to roam wherever they wish. Oh, the ones with horns hanging out over here. This fan is glorious.
We got some cattle over here. Let's go look at some cattle. And we're back to the goats. Oh, goat photo up. Mind if I sneak by? Are you Tubbs? Excuse me, can we do an interview? Um, are you Tubbs? Oh, hi. Yep. Hi. What are you doing? Just hanging out. Are you Tubbs? So just make sure he's not licking on you for me. You can't lick me. Don't lick me. Don't. You gonna try? Don't nibble on me. Come here, bud. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing over here? All right. I hope that's tubs. I have to go wash my arms. Well, that's cool. They got some uh, ice blocks right there melting. Stay nice and cool. Oh, another little piggy over here in the mud pit. All right, let's go inside. Check out the animal hospital and the drawing. I gotta wash my arms and hands. Exit. Yeah, it's a pull. Oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, nice. <laughs> Thanks. All right, let's head inside. We got wet arms, wet hands. It should feel good in the AC. No problem. So we got about five minutes till we draw stuff. Let's go look at something. We got the nutrition center over here. You can see what the animals eat. And here, let's see what's in this enclosure. Don't see anything. But you have your invertebrates over here. Creepy crawlies. No thanks. Millipedes, centipedes, tarantulas. Over here is your snakes and your reptiles. Oh my gosh, look right here on the glass. What is happening here? That's wild. Some amphibians in this one, the frogs, newts, salamanders. And here's the, one of the operating rooms. You've seen this on the, the magic of Disney's Animal Kingdom. MRIs, x-rays, operations all get done right here. Super cool. And over here is the science center. Should we draw something? Yay or nay? What do you think? Let me know in the chat. Should we keep moving and head back to the mainland of Animal Kingdom? Or should we do the animation experience and learn how to draw?
it looks like today we're gonna be sketching, I think this is Pua. Should we do it? Yeah, Randy says, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Why not? I'm into it. Oh, let's do it. I'm pumped. Also, while you're here in line, you can learn about the Green Tree Python. There's another enclosure over there. I like who spread these out. Very nice. Let's grab ourselves a pencil. A sheet of paper. And head on in. They do have boards to draw on in the rows. Just me. Yeah, thanks. Oh. Can I sit on the aisle by any chance? I appreciate that. Oh. This is perfect because I can put this right on the ground. Thank you so much. All right, I'm gonna get set up here and put you guys right there for now. Don't worry, I'll move you. All right, I had to dry off the wet arms and hands. All right, so we're doing the animation experience at Conservation Station. What you do is you get a little pad here. I got my pencil. And they kind of give you an outline of what you're gonna start with and to help you out get started, but then everyone's gonna create their very own, I think, Pua. We have an animator right up there in front. So, Melon, I don't draw and film at the same time. I'm going to try and film up top some and some of my drawing and go back and forth. Yeah, I like the one at DCA, too. They also have something similar to this over at Disney's California Adventure out on the West Coast. Let's see how this is going to work. Let's see if I do this. If I can make this work on this chair. See, does that work? All right, I think we're in business. So we'll do some angles like this, and then we'll do some angles. Whoa, that's up close to my face, like this. You get a little bit of everything. Um, I do not consider myself an artiste, Melon. But I will try. I'm gonna 
try and listen to the instructions very carefully. But there, I am a fan of Bob Ross. You know, there's no mistakes, just happy accidents. Here we go. Welcome, friends, to the animation experience at Conservation Station. Ready because here comes our Yay! Fund, which has all kinds of amazing animals from around the world. 
I got the excitement. I don't want to go home. Now you may have noticed that you were not given an eraser when you came into our classroom today, and that is actually on purpose. Why? Well, because we'd like to end this class on time. Okay. Um, so instead of racing, I want you to draw lightly because the lighter you draw, the less you'll have to worry about any mistakes that you make. Now you may have also noticed that we've gone ahead and done the first two steps for you. Uh, these steps are incredibly important. It looks like a ninja people, turtle. But I don't have a whole lot of time to explain. It. So very quickly, when we are is draw something, anything at all, doesn't matter what it is. Okay, we don't start off with details first. So for example, uh, we're about to draw a face. If you draw a face, you don't start off with eyes, nose, or mouth first. You actually want to start off with the basic shape of whatever you're about to draw. So we take whatever we're about to draw, we break it up into basic shapes. Now, for Koi here, it really all depends on the character that you're drawing. Uh, most of the time, uh, we use one basic shape, but depending on the character, it can be multiple shapes, like Koi here. Uh, however, we have combined all the different shapes that you would usually draw into one, so that way it's a little less confusing. Um, so we've kind of turned his head into this kind of onion shape here. Now you'll also notice oh, that we have pieces, vertical shots fired. horizontal lines throughout the uh, onion shape. This is called uh, guidelines. Guidelines help artists tell where to put things on characters' faces. Why do we do this? Well, because just like you, cartoon characters should wake up to find that their eye is on their neck, because that's not where it belongs. It belongs right where their eyes should go. Okay, um, so that's where that's why we have these guidelines to make sure that we're putting in that part of that face in the right place. Now we're gonna start at the end of the side of the line here at the bottom. And we're gonna draw our little guidelines so just very lightly with this. What I want you to do is just draw the straightest line you can draw vertically up to the first horizontal line inside that shape there. Now, these two lines that you have just drawn on a piece of paper very lightly have already gotten you to question in all of your life choices up to this point. I really want you to <laughs> think about taking a vacation. I really, I really want you to think and consider on that, okay? Um, please remember, folks, this is not for college credit, okay? This is a fun class. So treat this like you would treat karaoke, okay? And just have fun with it, okay? If you get frustrated, Stop what you're doing, turn your paper over, and draw whatever you want, okay? So we're going to start over here on the left-hand side, uh, on the left-hand side of that line there, and I'm going to go ahead and draw it in his eyes. Now, his eyes are circle-shaped. Now, a lot of people are intimidated by drawing circles, so I would like to help alleviate your tension by actually showing you how to draw a circle. Did you know that the circle is actually one of the only shapes that we as human beings can make naturally. You can actually make a circle naturally. Okay, all other shapes you can't make naturally. Okay, um, but the problem is most of you out there will use your wrist. Okay, however, your wrist was not made to move in a circle. Okay, uh, but there is a part of your body that was made to move in a circle. Your shoulder. Okay, your shoulder is a ball and socket joint. It's supposed to move in a circle. Okay? That's why a lot of times when you see uh, chefs and they're stirring something, they don't use their wrist, they use their shoulder. Because guess what? Holes are round. Okay? And so is your so is your shoulder. That's how your shoulder moves. So you want to make sure that you stir. Also, it's because it's stronger too, but that's beside the point. Now, if you try this right now, and you're like, I'm not getting the perfect circles that you're telling me, Joshua. Well, just like anything else, you have to, you know, Kind of do it a couple of times, like millions of times. Okay, so it does take practice. It's not going to happen right away. Okay, it's not a magical cure that automatically makes you have perfect circles. Uh, it takes a few years. Hi, Adrian. So you draw with your shoulder more. It gets a little bit easier. Now I don't know if you folks know this. Okay, uh, but drawing. When you're learning to be an artist, you're actually learning a second language. How many of you out there either speak a second language or know, or uh, are, are learning a second language? Anybody? Anybody out there? Okay. So you know how difficult it is to learn a second language, right? Well, that's what drawing is. You're learning a whole second language, but this is a very special language because everyone in the world speaks it, okay? Everybody. All right, now, we may have different nuances about different things, but for the most part, we all speak a visual language that's very similar, okay? 
Um, now, we want to make sure that Pua looks young, okay? Now, a lot of things that we're going to add here are going to make him look young. So, first thing we need to do, we need to give him big chubby baby cheeks, okay? Because that always says young to uh, an audience. So, we're going to start here at the bottom of his eye, and we're going to draw in a nice little curve. Baby shape, okay? This is Moana. This character is from Moana, after all, so water waves, okay? Over here on the right, I'm going to draw the same wave shape, but I'm going to draw this a little bit longer. So why later? Now, I can go ahead and draw it in his pupil. Now, his pupil is the exact same shape as the eye, just a little bit small. And you want to position it so it looks like your pupil is riding the wave with the cheek. Okay? Now, notice I've only drawn one. Believe it or not, he has two pupils. Wow, <laughs> no, shocking, no. Okay, uh, but there's a reason why I didn't draw both of them, and that's because I want to make sure that the pupil on the other side, at the very least, is the same height as the other one I just drew. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to very lightly draw two lines into the other eye. This way, I can draw the next pupil at least the same height as the other one. The good thing about drawing is that unlike math, you don't have to be 100% accurate. Okay? You can actually guess and make it almost look kind of like the character. Okay, so if it's a little off, that's okay. Mine's not perfect, but I'm holding a gimbal and drawing. Now, this is an optional step. I don't necessarily have to do this. I'm going to do this so that you can see this a little better. But you can also do this yourself, if you so choose. Now, to, come to uh, make these char this character look realistic, um, we're also going to throw in something that you would see in real life. You see, eyes are reflective surfaces. They reflect light. Okay? So, you want to show... There's a reflection of light inside of Kula's eyes by adding in a little reflection of light on either side. So it doesn't really matter what side you put these on, you can place this wherever you wish. Okay, you don't have to exactly follow mine. Okay. When you're done, to <laughs> emphasize that reflection, you can just shade around it inside the pupil there. So this is another optional step. You do not have to do this right now if you do not want to, or if you're a little bit behind. It's okay. Believe it or not, I know this is going to shock you to hear, but this piece of paper is not going to shut off when you leave this classroom. Okay? The, 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 this piece of paper will last for as long as you want it to last. Okay? And you don't need to upgrade your piece of paper to use another pencil or other utensil on it. Okay? You can just do it. Okay? So, and some of those pencils out there may have erasers. Okay? Just me. Alright, so don't worry about it if you can't get it done here. You can always do it again later, okay? Now, at the top of the eye, we're going to have some eyelashes. Now, we're not talking Disney Princess or Mickey, Minnie Mouse eyelashes, okay? These are just, he, has, he is a mammal and he has eyelashes, type of eyelashes, okay? So, we're going to have essentially a little curve right there at the top. And we're just going to kind of shake that curve up just a little bit. Now, when you think pig, when you think the word pig, usually you get a picture in your mind, okay? So what is the first thing you picture when you hear the word pig? And I want to shout it out if you know it. The snout, right? The snout. A lot of pigs have the snout, right? So we're going to draw it in the snout here. We're going to start right in between the eyes here. We're going to start with that guy like right here. And, and mm -hmm. I have some Ninja Turtle, too. I want you to draw a hill. A lot of pigs have snouts. However, Kuni Kuni pigs are very unique, as most pigs have shovel-shaped snouts that they use to dig on the ground to get to food. Uh, Kuni Kuni pigs are the pugs of the pig universe. Okay, their their noses are actually shorter, um, and they don't dig on the ground to get to food. They are grazers, which means they actually eat grass and uh, like the like cows and the sheep and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, so they don't dig as much as a mess as, as uh, a lot of other pigs do. Now we're going to come down here to the bottom guideline, that guideline that we used to in class. 
And what I want you to do is I want you to draw what I like to call a smile curve. I call this a smile curve because it's a curve. It looks like a smile. Okay? I know it's a shocking revolution. All right? Now you'll notice this goes a little bit past that middle guideline there. Just think of it just like that. Now starting just below the right end of the smile curve, I'm going to start another smile curve. This one's going to go to the right. This one's also going to go below the guideline. If it makes it easier for you to sit on top of it, then fine, do that. Uh, but this is going to be a little askew, so that's going to look a little different on both sides. Now go back up to the hill that you drew earlier, and we're going to extend the sides of the hill. You go just past, and curve it just a little bit, so you go just past the line that you made at the beginning of the glass. You can actually do that on both sides. And then what you're going to do is you're going to connect those two with another curve. Connect. Pretty, pretty things do make really good pets. They don't make as much mess as a lot of other things do. Um, so you'll see a lot of pretty, pretty things as pets. Now, right now he looks like he has a fancy mustache. Okay? Um, so we're going to change that by adding some details here. We're going to start off with uh, a little wrinkle right in between his, his snout there. And then we're going to draw on him. Oval shapes on either side for his nostrils. However, did you know that Cooney Cooney pigs, at one point in the 1970s, uh, were almost completely extinct? See, Cooney Cooney pigs are part of heritage breeds. These are animals that you think of when you think of farm cows, sheep, stuff like that. The problem is, unlike most other pig species, uh, Cooney Cooney pigs don't breed as quickly as other pigs do. So uh, they were uh, less and less considered to be part of farms. So we as a human race just kind of forgot about them and we just kind of let them die off almost. Uh, it was actually because of two people in New Zealand uh, who actually found out about Cooney Cooney pigs and had a passion for them. That they actually created a whole breeding process which allowed Cooney Cooney pigs to actually come back from almost complete extinction. And now, our uh, Pudding Pudding Pig population is huge. Uh, we have lots and lots of Pudding Pudding Pigs. So it just shows you that two people can affect uh, a whole big range of things, even bring uh, animals back to extinction. Now we're going to start off with two little wrinkles here, because we want this now to look a little bit more three-dimensional. One of the ways that we, as cartoonists and artists, bring cartoon characters to life is bring, uh, making them look like they're three-dimensional, like they're popping up on paper. This is not the only way. There are many different other ways to bring cartoon characters to life, but this is just one way, and that's the way we're going to do it here. All right, now, starting right below the cheek here, we're going to add in what's called a dimple. Now, if you don't know what dimples are, well, just smile. You feel right here at the end of your lips. Go you push your cheeks up when you smile. We're going to start on either side, right across from the snout itself. Just a little curve there. This should look like it's pushing up the cheeks, so it almost could, uh, should uh, mimic the, cur the curve that the cheek is. And from there, we're going to draw his smile. This is going to be closer to this uh, snout there. And we're just going to draw what we call a smirk, a half smile. And you're going to draw that on the other side. Another little fun fact about Pua and about Pudi Pudi Pigs. Earlier I told you that we have Pudi Pudi Pigs here at Disney Animal Kingdom. Okay? Um, and you can actually go out there and actually pet them. 
okay? You may notice that their hair is a little different than like a dog or a cat. Their hair feels more like the end of a fruit, okay? So we're gonna add some hair here to uh, pull up. And what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna start right where the guideline here touches the side of the unshape there, the left, and I'm going to just trace this a little bit, and then we're gonna break off, and have not one, not two, not three, little curvy letter J's. Now, why does his hair look spiky? Well, because he's not a hedgehog. Okay, that's a completely different animal. Alright? Uh, and we do want him to look cute and adorable. And in art world, generally, uh, for lines, curvy lines are more cute than, than jagged lines. Okay? So over here on the right, same thing, starting at the same place. I'm not going to draw exactly the same. Okay, so you can draw the big ones, small ones, whatever. Like that. Go ahead and trace the bottom of the chin. Go ahead and trace the bottom Here's another little fun story about our Queen Pretty Things here at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Did you know that uh, one of our Queen Pretty Things, and I won't tell you which one, but one of them, was actually modeled for Pua. That's right. It was the model for Pua. Back when they were uh, doing concept art for both Moana and Zootopia, mm -hmm. the artist came here to Disney's Animal Kingdom to kind of research the animals here, kind of get an idea of what they look like. Uh, and there was a little piglet, little pretty pretty piglet, that was so cute that they wanted to make a character based off of her. And so they did. Let's go. I want to do that. Now, Pua does have a signature hair on the top of his head. It's pretty easy to have a bunch of kind of curves sticking down the top. Okay. Now, what I like to do is I like to give one light pass and then go back and kind of fix him a little bit. Kind of fixing what I like. Tracing what I like and not tracing what I don't like. And then from there, I'm going to trace the sides all the way down to the end. Make this here, here on the side. Okay. And so go out there and uh, check her out. I can, I can almost 100% almost, uh, guarantee you're going to know which one of those pigs it was the model for Pool right away. Okay? Especially if you've seen the movie Moana times. Um, so I don't know who she is, but I won't tell you who it is. You have to go out there and find out for yourself. Alright, next thing we're going to add in is we're going to add in something that, well, in real life, Queen Queen Bakes do not have. But we're going to add it anyways because it's actually a very important part of the cartoon character's face. Eyebrows. So I'm going to start to the left with an eye here on the left-hand side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw an arch that goes right over the top of the eye. This is going to draw very lightly, though. On the right hand side, I'm going to draw that same arch. This time, I'm going to draw a little higher, just to give it a little bit of differentiation on both sides. All right? Now, from there, I'm going to make his eyebrows look furry by just drawing a bunch of lines. So when I'm done, it should look like he has kind of a furry lightning bolt. So why do we give animals eyebrows when they generally don't have eyebrows? Well, it's very simple. To a moat. Because we're trying to communicate to a human audience. The humans speak a lot through our facial expressions visually, especially our eyes and our eyebrows. Animals generally don't have uh, eyebrows like we do. Uh, so they can't show, show the same range of emotions that we can in our face. So we add eyebrows to the characters so that way they can show that same range of emotions. Now, are we going to see something here? No. Ears. Yeah, he has ears, I think. No. All right, so we're going to start up here at the top. You'll notice these little L shapes on the side here. So starting at the top, go ahead and go into this L shape. Actually, before you do that, go ahead and draw the letter C. Right inside the L shape. Then start at the top of the head, towards the uh, fur there, and just going to draw this here. Hmm. Waves. 
The leaves get me every time. Now, his ears kind of look like giant Hershey's kisses on the side of his head. So, starting at the bottom of the uh, letter C shape here, I'm going to draw another curve going down. Now, pig's ears, just like your ears, actually fold at the top. I'm going to go back to the exact same point I just started from. And this time, I'm going to draw another curve going towards the head. Again, same on the sides. Now, many, many, many animals uh, have ears inside of them. Yes, they do. I mean, many animals have fur inside their ears. It's called their virgins. So we're going to go inside the ears. We're just going to draw a bunch of fur. Okay. Again, draw it lightly. Go back. Go around the side a little bit more. Why do animals have fur inside their ears? You know? Protect your ears. Dust and bugs out of their ears. Now, one other clue to find out, if you haven't seen Moana before, one other clue to find out which one of our pigs uh, is, I mean, was the mother for Moana, uh, is that uh, just like our pig, uh, Hua is white, generally, with gray spots. So we're going to add a little curve coming here from the eyebrow down to the cheek. So again, the top doing the same thing. Top of the forehead, we're going to draw in looks like a little blobby kind of shape, just because of being special. And then on the right ear, we're going to go ahead and draw a nice little. And if you want to, you can shape those in because they are a light gray, so you can go ahead and just shape those in. Only if you want to. Now, if you want to learn more about the pigs here, uh, again, don't forget you can go out to the guest. Uh, section right outside. You can see our clean pig pigs there. Um, however, there are other pigs here in uh, Disneyland. You, know, you can check it out. Don't forget the uh, warthogs. You can see them. You can see all of our female warthogs um, on the Kilimanjaro safaris. We also have the Babarusa, which is near the front of the park. Uh, Babarusa are also known as the deer pig. They're very cool looking pigs, by the way. Please go look at them. Uh, they are almost extinct. Uh, and we want to try to help them out. So learn how you can help them out out there as well. Talk to the keepers out there. Um, but uh, definitely learn more about them because they definitely need our help. Now, I see that a lot of you are done with your drawings. And I'm sure that most of you are looking at your drawing right now. And you're probably going, wow, that was amazing. And there are others of you that are looking at your drawing and you're going, wow. But regardless of how you feel about your drawing, I want you to know that the fact that you actually tried to draw this hair for me is that you, you're a pretty good artist. Mm -hmm. right. You're a pretty good artist because you actually tried. Oh. However, if you want to become a much better artist, I encourage you to keep drawing. Don't stop drawing. Not too shabby. You draw, the better for artists you become. Regardless of whether you want to become a better artist or not, you should be very proud of what you've done here today. Just Let's like any artist, you can sign your name. You can also like today's date too if you'd like. What is today's date? I would highly suggest you put today's date if you're serious about becoming an artist. Take this drawing home, even if you don't like it, put it up on a bulletin board or cork board or refrigerator. What's the his date? Keep referring back to it every time. 14? Cool. I promise you're going to see some improvement. All right. Well, folks, in just a moment, you're going to leave the class. But before you do, I would like to go over three things that I want everyone to do before you leave. Please listen to all three of these things before you do anything so that I can make sure that you all do these three things, okay? First thing I want you to do is I want you to take a moment with a minor seat so make sure you have all your personal belongings. Not too shabby, right? Second thing I'd like to do is I'd like you to take your clipboards and place them right back on the seats exactly the way you found them. The third thing I want you to do is I want you to take your clip, uh, take your pencils with you. Do not leave them on the seats or on the clipboards. Also, if you have crayons, take them with you as well. As you exit over here to the right, because everyone is going to be exiting to the right. It's the animation experience. Right. Right. All right. You're going to see a bit over there. That bit is for your pencils. 
please play some there, actually. <coughs> well, I hope you had a great time. I hope you had a great time, too. If you get nothing else out of this class, you're going to keep on growing. Have a great day, everyone. Yes, awesome work. Yeah, James. All right. Let's gather our belongings and skedaddle. All right. Heads back. Pencils with us. Oh no, there goes my pua. Recycle our pencil. Not terrible. Not an artist at all. I'm gonna draw stick figures, but there it is. They do change up the drawings throughout the day, so if you aren't particularly into one character, the next one at 2:30 is Pumba. There you go. You. You're welcome. Well, this has been a delightful experience here at the Rafiki's Planet Watch. We got to go inside the conservation station. We got to hang out with some goats, some pigs, some mini horses, some cattle. Learned how to draw. And you can do a lot more, too. There's a lot more knowledge and learning, and it's great for the whole family, especially the little ones. But I'm sure us adults can learn a thing or two as well. But we're going to head back to the mainland. Oh, thanks, everyone. Thanks, Chris, Lynette. Today's the 14th. Sweet. Thanks, Melon. Yeah, not bad. I mean, we went from a Ninja Turtle to a duck to Pua real quick. Looks great, Bob. Let's see if we could find. A hidden Mickey. I'll show you a little hidden Mickey up here. All right, we'll sit in the back of the train. Good, nice hack, Brandy. Looks like the train's unloading. Perfect timing. <laughs> Trying to make this train. There's a mosaic when you walk in. If you look in the word station, the second T in station, S-T-A-T-O-N, second T, right below the elephant's trunk, there's a little hidden Mickey. All right, Brandy says go to the back of the, wait, that is the back of the train. I was going the right way. All right, let's try it for the back. Holy cow, look at the time. 
It's already 20 after 2? All right. Hey, Dilo, what's going on? All right, Brandy says we're in the last car, which we are. You sit in the back of the train. You can see the heating fish wa Donald. We hope you enjoyed your visit to Rafiki's Planet Watch. We are now beginning our return trip to the African town of Harambe. For your safety, please remain seated and keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the train. Sit all the way back against the bench. And please, be sure to watch your children. Bienvenidos. Comenzamos ahora nuestro viaje de regreso. Stillator Conservation Station. service from Rafiki's Planet Watch to the village of Harambe. As you head back out into Disney's Animal Kingdom, we hope you take with you a great appreciation for the very journey that led us here. <laughs> you see, it was Walt Disney's passion for animals and conservation that led him to send film crews across the globe to capture dramatic footage of wildlife in a rope cave. creates a unique opportunity to connect with wildlife on an emotional level, inspiring us to preserve nature through care and understanding. And did you know that each film provides an opportunity for film goers to become conservationists just by seeing the films? A portion of the first week's ticket sales for each Disney nature release is directed through the Disney's around the globe. that comes from preserving and protecting our natural world. As you venture out into the park today, or make your way back to wherever you call home, remember that legacy lives in you. Asante Sano. Where are you, fish lab? Backstage. Don't look. Donald. Hi. 
There he is, Hayden Donald. Uh, more backstage. This is us. Let's go to the Kutoka. Harambe. Exit right along the edge of the station. That's rough. All right, that was fun. A little Rafiki's Planet Watch. We don't do that too often. I hope everyone's enjoying the stream so far. If you haven't heard, if you missed the announcement, the thing I get asked the most over the last few years about streaming and doing different videos and edited videos is can we get some consistency can you do it at the same time on the same day of the week and I with my all my jobs I work a bajillion different jobs it's hard to narrow that down as you can see from the random times that we live stream however it looks like we have a run and I've reserved the other ones from now to hopefully the end of the year but at least until November uh, Thanksgiving where every Monday at 12 p.m. Eastern, we are going to go live. We're going to do it from my house. We're going to call it Mix It Up Mondays. Who knows what we'll do? Maybe we'll make food. Maybe we'll make drinks. We're going to talk about Disney news that came out that week. We're going to talk about upcoming projects here at the theme parks, whether it's Universal, SeaWorld, Disney, Gatorland. Who knows? We'll talk pop culture. And then we'll talk our schedule for the upcoming week. So you'll know, hopefully, within some kind of time frame of when I'll be live and what videos are coming out as well as some Patreon exclusives. We're going to hang out with the Patreons every Monday exclusively as well on top of our monthly Zoom call. So lots of fun stuff coming down the pipe. But make sure you are subscribed. You got that bell on, all notifications. You don't want to miss any live streams or our new Mix It Up Mondays happening at 12. Now, if you're at work or school or can't make it, no worries. You can always watch the replay. But if you're around, come hang out. Speaking of hanging out, we are doing an in-person meetup. If you're around the parks or the Orlando area, October 1st through the 4th, we're getting a whole big group of us together. We're going to be hanging out, having a good time. It's free. You don't need to sign up. You just show up, hang out, introduce yourself, say hi. We've done a few of these now, and they're always a great time. If you want our schedule for that, you can go check it out on the website, adventuresbycarney.fun, F-U-N. That's right. It's real. Also on the website, that's where you can grab some merch if you want to support. Besides the Patreon. Oh, look who's coming around the corner. You can get your merch in there, your hats, your t-shirts, your water bottles. I'm sporting all of them today. I got the water bottle. I got the hat on. I got the Dak shirt. Rocking the shirt. Yeah. Oh, turn this off. That's fun. And there goes Rafiki and Timon in the distance. Rafiki and Timon just passed by right up ahead. Right there, you can see him. There he is. All right, as we leave Africa and head to Discovery Island. Tomorrow we will be live again from Epcot for the International Food and Wine Festival. Also friend of the channel, Piano Rob, is going to be playing at Rose and Crown, so we're going to try and visit him. And you never know what kind of trouble we're going to get to the, get into over at Epcot. It's always a good time. We also have the Eat to the Beat concert series. I'm not sure who's playing tomorrow, but we'll see what happens. To find out exactly what time we're starting, like I said, I recommend following the socials or jump on the Discord. The Discord is an amazing community. It's completely free. I recommend using your YouTube name or your real name. 
such an awesome place to hang out with like-minded people. We talk about live streams, edited streams, just what's going on around the country, the weather, meetups, my schedule. We also have tabs to promote other people. I know there's a lot of fans and friends of the channel that have their own YouTube pages and there are other projects that they're working on. So as long as it's promoting positivity, we're all about it. But all that you can find over on the Discord. The link is down below in the description as well as here in the chat. Another way to find out when I'm going to be streaming tomorrow and in the future are following the social media. Instagram at Official Carney. Twitter at your WDW guy. The TikTok is Adventures by Carney. And we talked about supporting the channel. If you really want to help out, I cannot do this channel without the Patreon. So big shout out to all the Patreons out there. You are all absolutely amazing. We'll be doing... I couldn't do half of this stuff without you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you're able to, I know not everyone's able to, but if you're able to help out or you want to check out our Patreon program, just go to patreon.com backslash adventures by Carney and find out how you can help out. Again, I know it's not for everybody, but big, big thank you to everyone who is able to support. I'm going to hang out with you all the way out, unless the phone dies, because it's just at 10% about a second ago. So the phone might die, but just in case it does, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk with you until it dies, or I'll say goodbye. But I want to thank everyone for hanging out with me on this beautiful Thursday. It means a lot. I know there's a lot of different channels and things you could be doing or other channels you could be watching. So it means so much. So thank you. Thank you. I really, really, really appreciate it. We're, uh, we've had a really awesome August. It's good to be back in the swing of things here in September. And we're going to finish the year strong. We're just going to keep pumping out streams, lots of content. If I can't go live, we're going to try and get shorts out as often as possible just to give you a little something to get through the day. But uh, yeah, it really, I'm honored that you're hanging out with here with us on Thursday. If you missed any part of the stream, feel free to go back and watch. If you haven't hit the like button yet, you can still do so. If you haven't subscribed yet, you can still do so. We started out with some park hacks. We did lots of fun facts today and just a bunch of fun things. We did a couple of shows. We did Feathered Friends in Flight, Festival of the Lion King, went to Rafiki's Planet Watch, went on a safari, walked around, saw a bunch of animals, different trails, Rainforest Cafe. <sighs> what a day. I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't plan on uh, being here past 2 o'clock. And it's about 2.40, almost 2.40 here. So, uh, yeah, I wonder how I was supposed to be home by 2. Maybe about an hour late. But you know what? An hour spent with all of you is an hour well spent. All right, I'll show you more of the park on our way out. I'll show you some fun facts if I can find any. Ah, oh, I forgot to swap the fuel right again. I was using it all day. All right. I'm actually afraid of the stream dying and it just living in live mode forever. So I'll just do a formal goodbye. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks so much. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow from Epcot. We'll see you Monday at noon. And I hopefully will see a bunch of you October 1st and the 4th. Go follow the socials. All the stuff's down in the description. So anything you missed, if I spoke too quickly or you missed anything, it's all down in the description. You can also ask somebody, jump on the Discord, and uh, have an amazing rest of your Thursday wherever you are watching around the world. I love you. I'm rooting for you. And please, be kind to one another. I'll see you real soon. Thanks so much for watching and hanging. So long from Disney's Animal Kingdom. <laughs>